hello and good evening. Do we have music? We do. Right. Welcome to a Friday night stream. Not done one of these for a while, but because we've got new tech, aka Quest Free, or a la Quest Free, should I say? Um, I'm going to carry on doing some PC VR testing. So this is carrying on from the um, I'll stream yesterday, the day before, which would be what Wednesday? Yes, I've lost track of time. Uh, so on Wednesday stream, which is the first part, we covered a lot of um, sim titles, sim racing titles, uh, and today we're going to look at DCS and Microsoft Flight Sim, hopefully. Um, so I'm just running updates now, that's why I was a little bit late, so trying to make sure they were both up to date and Microsoft Flight Simulator takes ages. Um, so the format of tonight, the plan is, we're going to, um, I'm going to do a brief intro on how to set the, uh, the quest up with link cable now that I've got it working and what the problem was for me and then we'll look at virtual desktop and how to set that up and the uh, new fantastic virtual desktop open XR runtime uh, written by Matt who's written the open XR toolkit so that means you can now use virtual desktop with the open XR toolkit using virtual desktop open XR runtime so we'll go through those, I'll record it, and I may repurpose some of the video from tonight's stream as a tutorial, we'll see. Depends how uh, well smoothly it goes or not. So pretty chilled one. Um, I'll probably go grab a drink in a minute. Uh, so feel free to do the same. It's not gonna be rapid fire racing straight away. It's gonna be a bit of setup and Probably a lot of viewers may understand the config already, but I do get a lot of questions on how do you set up virtual desktop? How do you use Oculus Link? So I'll go through Oculus Debug tool very quickly and the uh, USB power settings, which was the actual problem for me. So hopefully I'm coming through okay. If people can hear me, let me know. Let me know if the sound levels are okay. Uh, I think that's about it. So, had a look at the change log on DCS. Uh, so this is the multi-threading guide. So if you're going to play this on a modern GPU and CPU, I suggest you um, launch it in the multi-threaded mode um, and use um, the OpenXR runtime with it to get the best performance for VR. So I'll link to that. I did do a video actually a while back on how to use this. And I was just seeing what the latest build was of uh, DCS, because I thought 2.9 was out um, because Eagle Dynamics had tweeted 2.9 is a, uh, I got the impression it was available, <laughs> but I think they just meant coming soon. So the latest open beta, which was from the 22nd, uh, is that right? quite a while ago. Twenty second of August. Okay, I'm surprised we've not had a build since then. Oh, that must be the case. Okay. Let me have a look. The F16C and F18C are getting radar updates in 2.9. So it's, it's telling us what's coming to 2.9, but it's not actually out yet. Okay, so, right, first of all, I think I will check that Oculus Link is working and quickly run through the setup procedure for that. shortcuts over to the main monitor. Right, so what you'll need is a, a cable. So let me unravel this tangle.
So, um, you can get the official Oculus one, which is pretty expensive. This is just £25 in the UK currently. This is the QJet one. Now, at first, I was worried because the uh, the power supply for the Quest 3 is 18 watts, so two times uh, two amps by nine volts, whereas the old one was two amps by I think it's five, which is 10 watts, so it's like double the power. But it seems to be fine, and the problems I was having with my link connection was due to the um, power plan mode on the USB socket which I'll, uh, I'll bring up on the screen in a minute so you know what to check for. Because I had thought I'd set that correctly before, um, but it's, I must have had a Windows update and it's reverted it back to the old power plan. So what was happening, I think the USB socket was going to energy saver mode and not working, like disabling itself or something. So quite a common problem. So you'll need a link cable. And with the QJet, important thing is I'll go back to the other screen. You got a bigger view here, yeah. So in order to set, this has got like a chip in it. So to activate the chip, you need to plug the uh, the power supply into it first. And then the other end into your Quest 3. Or Quest 2, if you're using Quest 2. Plug it in there. Wait a couple of seconds for the chip to activate. And then once it's activated, then you can plug this into a USB free socket or better on the back of your PC. So you need the bandwidth really. It is possible to do it with USB 2, but you're gonna have to turn the bitrate so down that it'll look awful. So unless you're on USB 3, I wouldn't bother. I'd, um, which brings on to another thing to do with virtual desktop setup, which we'll get to in a minute when I show you the uh, the router or router I'm using, which has been fantastic. Okay, so we are now plugged in. I've forgotten how, um, because I've been using it on virtual desktop, I've forgotten how liberating it is not having all these wires. Right. Hopefully this works. Also, what's quite funny is by accident, my real monitor that you can't see because of the green screen is right here in front of me, which lines up <laughs> with the pit, the pit screens. And I think earlier when I had my hand there, yeah, for the mouse, <laughs> it actually looks like I'm here. Anyway, I digress. Right, let's go back to uh, the screen. So once you've you've plugged it in, open up Oculus. Now, because um, I've been using a virtual desktop open XR runtime, it's um, the Oculus app is now aware that Oculus open XR runtime isn't the default one. That's why I've got that warning. So I'm going to set it back to default. Uh, you shouldn't normally have this warning unless you're running other headsets on your system. So say if you've got a G2, for example, and this is the first time you've got the Oculus software, uh, you'll, you'll get this warning because if you've got a G2, the Windows Mixed Reality Open XR Runtime is the default one. So to switch it, you'll just have to hit set as default and it takes you to the settings here and set Oculus as active. Now you can get... Um, so open XR Explorer here to double check which one is your your active runtime, uh, and you you can switch it here as well. But this is essentially doing the same thing as what each of these apps will do. So now that blue error problem has gone away, we've got the um, Quest connected, and what you'll want to do is just do a quick USB test. Test connection. And hopefully we should get at least two gigabits. There you go, lovely. 2.5 gigabits per second. So you you want to be 
at least over one and a half really over two is better if you get 2.5 great you might even get higher than that depending on the quality of your cable if the cable's quite poor you might not get the um, required throughput to, to run this properly it might say can't run at usb free speed or something it might drop it down all right so we can quit test how's the volume levels it's not too loud in fact text of speech even on everyone's very quiet apparently there's people watching <laughs> uh, right in settings so you click on the quest 3 again and then we'll want to go to device setup and we want to go link cable continue and we've got the green dot because we did the test and it should be fine okay so it'll complete Right, devices. So, if we now we can look at is it the graphic pr preferences, yes it is. So these are the options that are available currently on the Quest 3. So it says 72 hertz recommended. Hey Lincoln, just left work, nice. Uh, 72 hertz, 80 hertz and 90. Uh, 120, surprisingly 120 hertz isn't available um, on the standard Quest 3 uh, link option. But it is via virtual desktop, which we'll look at later. And it is available on Quest 2. I don't know why it's not on there. I think that's just, just a, been a, an omission because the headset's capable of it. So I expect there'll be an update to the Oculus app soon to have 120 hertz. Um, by default, it'll be on automatic recommended. So what it'll do, it'll look at your GPU and go, what's the recommended resolution based on your system spec and GPU? So because we're running a fairly beefy 1490, we can just whack that all the way to the top and that'll give us a combined resolution of 5408 by 2896 which is slightly higher than the panel resolution it always is because it accounts for the uh the barrel distortion or the warping of the image the scene has to be rendered bigger than the panel to then be undistorted by the lens if undistorted is a word <laughs> Um, so don't be alarmed but that's a resolution you should see in all apps like Steam VR so if you were to launch Steam VR now and you left the slider at 100% that's the resolution you should see so you want to max this out first before you start playing around with the Steam VR settings so that's it for basic setup I think stuff to do with oh, no, there's an error message no microphone detected not sure why I've not looked into it for me, I don't really care because I'm using a separate mixer for my audio. Um, so what else was the right? So once you've got that set up, in order to tweak the connection with the wired link cable, there's something called the Oxus debug tool. So I've got a shortcut here. And if I just go to open file location, this might be a bit small, but hopefully you'll be able to see it on the stream. Uh, so on C drive program files oculus oculus support oculus diagnostics so depending on where you've installed it uh, there should be an oculus debug tool exe here which i've just made a shortcut for on my desktop here so i'll just open this up and then you've got a whole bunch of settings which we won't go through because I've, I've gone through this on a quest 2 video i might leave a link to that later uh, but what's interesting is you can see the codec here so H.264 is the standard one. I believe H.265 is used for AirLink. Uh, I've tried using H.265 over wired, but over wired link, and it seems to go really funny. So uh, if you're using the Oculus wired link, I'd leave on H.264. Sliced encoding, I've left that on. If you're playing any games and you suddenly see like a white bar at the bottom, that sometimes happens when sliced video encoding happens. Uh, so it used to happen quite a bit on Dirt Rally 2. So if that occurs, you can just turn that off and basically send, instead of sending segments of an encoded image and then the headset decoding each slice per frame, it'll just do one image per frame. Encode resolution width, uh, you can override this to set the, the video image that's encoded, that's sent to you, what the width of that needs to be. So I used to put that on maximum but on the Quest 2, but I've just left it to zero default for now. Uh, dynamic. Encode dynamic bitrate. 
So I think, again, this is more for AirLink. You can set this on, so depending on your Wi-Fi connection, it'll change the bitrate of the video that's been sent. So if you have that disabled, if you've got a good uh, Wi-Fi signal for AirLink, which we're not gonna cover today, then yeah, that, this is the setting I'd leave it on. If your Wi-Fi is in a noisy area, I'd probably have that as on. Um, Okay, encode bitrate. So normally you can only put the maximum of 500 in here, but if you want to go higher than that, you can just um, open up Notepad, type in the number you want, and then just paste it into this, and it'll let you go, I think 950 is the limit, it'll let you paste. So you can, it seems like a quite a funny hack of a way of bypassing the limit. Whether it actually goes beyond 500, I don't know. So I, I picked up this tip from the OpenXR Toolkit Discord, because I was sent it to 504, that was the maximum, but you can push a higher bit rate by, like I say, just opening up Notepad. Yeah, I'll show you. You'll think, what the hell am I talking about? So if I get my keyboard, don't worry. We will we will do some gaming eventually, but uh, I'm just covering this off because people just wonder how you do this if they're thinking of getting a Quest free and they've never set one up before. So if you type 900 here, and you put that this back to 400, you can type 500, but that they've they've made it so you can't go beyond, like, can I do 560? No. The highest you can actually type in is 500 uh, megabits per second, but funnily enough, you can just copy and then paste 900. So like I say, don't know if this actually works. If anyone who works for Meta knows if this genuinely gets around it and gives you more bandwidth, then I'd love to know. Link sharpening. Uh, I think this is done on the headset. So I think this is telling the headset to do f the quest to do its own. Well, actually, I'm not too sure because there is some kind of upscaling. But I don't know if it's set up, set, if you can set it here. Maybe it is. I can't. I can't remember if this is done on the headset or done on the uh, the PC side. That's on normal. If you find the game looks a little over sharpened on the link, then you can either dis disable it or put it to quality. Yeah. I'll leave it on normal. And mobile a asynchronous space warp. So this must be space warp, which is reprojection done by the XR2 chip. Uh, there is regular asynchronous space warp in here as well. PC asynchronous space warp, which I've got disabled. So this is the same as the reprojection setting in SteamVR. It's just um, Oculus's version of it, which tends to be a better than Steam's one, or at least it used to be. So that's off at the minute. Now I should probably turn that off. So if you want to see what your raw throughput is, then you want disabled on both, otherwise you'll get motion smoothed fake frames. So that, that's it for the basic stuff. I think that's it, we should be good to go. Don't save. Right, so once we've done that, you might think, oh right, we can just play the game. No, you need to put the headset on and then you'll get a prompt for, um, actually, I can probably cast to uh, my um, Chromecast, so you can see what I'm seeing in the headset. Let's get my phone on the access point. Because we'll need this for later anyway for the uh, virtual desktop demo. A moment. Let's pop in the uh, capture card over. Let me know if this is actually useful for anyone so far, or if everyone already knows all this stuff. I imagine most people will.
Okay, we're now seeing our um, Remcast. Now, if you've just tuned in, the plan is we will eventually get around to checking out DCS and Microsoft Flight Sim. At the minute, I'm just doing a quick guide, which I'll cut down to an edited video, probably. Okay, that should be coming through, so you can see what I'm seeing now. You're here to see how PCVR looks via link cable. Did you figure out why you couldn't? Yeah, so that's to do with the power setting. Good reminder, thanks for that. We'll check that out in a second. So once we've plugged it in, you'll get a prompt saying enable quest link. If you're not getting this after you've plugged it in, then you know something's gone wrong. So all you need to do is hit enable. I'm not sure if it can cast what I'm seeing through a link. I don't think I've ever done that. I'm guessing maybe not. I might have to stop the uh, screencast in order to... So... What I'll do, I'm going to stop the. <laughs> All I wanted to show you was that button that comes up that you can't see otherwise. Whilst I'm still here, if you don't see it, you should. Um, you can you can go to your settings here, and then there's the quest link option, and then you you click Rift, and then you click launch. Is that coming through? So again, I'll do it, but I think I need to be not casting what the what the quest tree is seeing in order for me to launch link to my PC if that makes sense. So right now that you've seen that I'll stop casting. Put it back to uh, that cam so you can at least see something. a blank screen. Okay, I'll reboot the quest. Oh, the other thing is I probably need to reset my Guardian. So that's the other thing to take note of if you had your, so my Guardian on stationary at the other side of the room. If you're outside of your stationary position, you might need to reset it because it will then think you're in a, a non-safe zone. Boundary. Dictionary. We'll do a new one here. Oh, boy. Let's reboot the headset. It worked last night. <laughs> the streaming demons know I'm trying to show this live. So that was um, my PC detecting the headset reboot and disconnecting. Whilst that's doing that, let me plug the, uh, the PC capture back. And I'll double check that power setting, make sure it's not reverted back to what it was.
All right, so the, the problem that I had yesterday was to do with the uh, power setting. So if you go into your Windows control panel, go to hardware and sound. This is only really if you're having intermittent USB connection problems with your PC, not just Link. This, in a lot of cases, fixes it. In some cases, you might just have bad luck and your USB socket isn't compatible and you might need to get a separate uh, PCI USB card. Um, but yeah, m mine's been intermittent. It's been intermittent with the Py Pimax Crystal and I wonder if it's related to this. So anyway, if you go into the control panel, hardware and sound, power options, and I've gone to edit settings. Uh, so I found that by just typing edit power plan and this has come up and then for each of your power plans so I've got an extra one here because I use a process lasso um, but so you'll just probably have high performance and power saver and balanced those three uh, but the, the one I've got active at the minute is the bits on highest performance and then you need to go to USB settings USB selective suspend setting that was enabled so you don't want to selectively suspend. We'll have that disabled. Should be on disabled, which it is. So that, that was the thing that was causing me the grief yesterday. Uh, sorry, on Wednesday on the stream. Right, so we rebooted. Let's see if it now connects. Fingers crossed. If it doesn't, we'll move to virtual desktop. yesterday let's put it back to standard and then um, the other thing you can do if you're having problems with link and you don't want to reboot your PC which will be my next thing to try and fix this is you can um, restart the oculus service this is what handles the um, the link link connection I have noticed also with this AMD PC, I think I need to do a BIOS update because it'll sometimes crash, but not when it's overheating, it's when it's like cold and doing nothing. I think it's to do something to do with the voltage curve. So when it's doing nothing, it basically down vaults itself to run on idle to use less power and then can sometimes crash itself. Quite bizarre, but it's fine under load when it's, when it's busy doing work. fixed it we're now working so just to restart that service so there you go you've got two troubleshooting tips to try make sure the power setting on the USB socket you've got that suspend uh, thingamajiggy set to disabled and you can also restart the service which is essentially would have been the same as restarting the PC right so uh, you want to see what I'm seeing now so if you want to stream this to show or record video footage for whatever reason so you want to upload a cool video to YouTube or you stream then the Oculus debug tool which um, is in this location here in the same folder in program files Oculus support Oculus diagnostics there's Oculus mirror so we'll just fire that up and now everyone can see what you're seeing on PC. So in theory, we're good to uh, start demoing uh, VR stuff. So I know people that have tuned in, 
Should you, would you like to see game a gameplay now of DCS? You try that, or do you want me to quickly go over a, a virtual desktop setup, which is a lot quicker actually, and the new uh, virtual desktop open XR runtime? So whilst you're thinking about that, I'm going to go get myself a cold fizzy drink because it's getting warm in here. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. I thought, if no one's actually said any preference, I'll go over virtual desktop quickly. And then we can say all the setup infos at the start of the stream. And then the rest of the stream can be gameplay and testing. Can you use virtual desktop with link cable? So technically, you can but it almost defeats the point. Um, so virtual desktop is obviously designed for working over a wireless environment. Um, it's got its own separate encoder, but um, yeah, I believe you can if you leave the cable plugged in still and you don't switch the runtime. I think it'll, um, it'll, it'll work over the wire. Right. So, stop the recording on the first segment so I can edit that later. So we may see a repurposed video, which looks like a stream, just because I'm too lazy to make a separate one. Right, part two, configuration for virtual desktop. So, first thing you'll need after you've got your um, Quest free. So this is the 128 gig version, the 512 gig is uh, about 150 pounds more so you can either spend the extra money on that or do what i did and with the 140 pounds for 144 pounds i went for this wi-fi 6e router here and this model in particular is what a lot of people on the virtual desktop discord recommend as a dedicated uh, router for the quest 3 and and as a, just a dedicated one to, for 6e. I didn't I didn't actually know that. I just happened to go. Oh, this seems like a decent one. And after I'd ordered it, this was the one um, Guy has been recommending. Well, I think he's been recommending. It's on his Discord, so I don't really know. So this is the Archer AXE75 is the model. It's also called AXE5400. AXE5400 Archer AXE75. Bizarre. TP link um, naming convention. So, in the description of this stream, I've put a link to this if you want to get one. And, um, like, say, hey, GT, um, was, was £144. I think it's gone back up to £200 in the UK. Uh, the link below is an affiliate link, so if you're thinking of getting one, if you use that link, it helps the channel out. But obviously, you probably find it cheaper now, maybe, because it's gone back to 200 So, look out for prime deals. It should be around the 144, 150 price point. Uh, and it's really blazingly quick. So I have my phone and my work laptop connected to it during the day now because it's actually quicker than my uh, one gigabit LAN. It'll run at like 2.2 gigabits wirelessly. And uh, you might see just a Wi-Fi 6. It's Wi-Fi 6E. You want specifically 
because um, it runs on the 6 gigahertz band, the 6E does, Wi-Fi 6 doesn't. I think that's still on the 5 gigahertz band, which will be noisier if you've got more Wi-Fi devices in your house. So spend the extra if you're getting one for, um, for the Quest 3. Uh, you'll, you'll get more performance anyway, even for other devices that are 6E enabled, which is relatively new. I think next year Wi-Fi 7 is coming. So, yeah, and that'll be backwards compatible, but that's not going to be until the end of next year. And the Quest 3 is not Wi-Fi 7 compatible, so you won't be able to make the most of it, but just an FYI, because I looked into it. Uh, so, yeah, you'll need one of these. I don't know if it'll be picked up in the camera behind. Can I lift this up? It's not going to come through. Right. Here's the picture of it. <laughs> so the important thing is you want your PC playing the VR game wired directly into this thing. Um, there's no good your PC being on Wi-Fi then connected to this via Wi-Fi or going around the houses. So you want it to connect it directly to this. Um, it can be set up as an access point. So if you if you have a main router with its internet connection connected to that, you can turn this into access point mode. Or if you want life simple, you can just run it in out of the box, normal uh, internet router mode and just get one of the outputs from your main household router to go into this. Your PC goes into this and your Quest 3 connects to this directly. Uh, but the important thing is both your PC and your Quest 3 are on the same network um, to minimize latency. That's the aim of the game. And I think this is the first time I can now recommend sim racing over Wi-Fi. Up until this point, I just thought the latency was too high, but now with this and the Quest 3 and the AV1 codec, um, I think the latency is good enough and the image quality is good enough to play wireless. The only thing now is your battery. Uh, so my also my router is like two meters away. If you're in another room, it might not be as good. But so ideally you want it in the same room that you're gaming. So that was it for the hardware setup. Um, I won't go into the router settings because it'll be different depending on which one you pick. Uh, but maybe if people want it, I can make a separate video, but it's, it's really quite simple. Uh, and ideally the less devices connect to, connected to it, the better. But the fact that it's Wi-Fi 60 on, it's on its own six gigahertz band should make thing life better because um, you'll have less devices unless you've got loads of 60 devices. Right, okay, enough of that waffle. Um, set up, so uh, let's go to the virtual desktop site. So first of all, you, you'll want to buy it on the uh, Oculus store. Um, so you need the Oculus app for virtual desktop. So go buy it for that, download it onto your Quest. And then also you'll want to go to the virtual vrdesktop.net website. Uh, I'll put that in the uh, description later because I don't think I've included that. Download this. Uh, you want the, um, the streamer to say it. download streamer app. Windows. Interesting they've got it for an Apple Mac. Never tried it. I think that might be more for if you're in. You want to see, say you're working on your laptop, you could possibly use that as a, a way of looking at your desktop on, on the on the, uh, on the Quest 3. But anyway, we're on Windows, so download the streamer app, run the installer. I'll look to the rest of this website actually. There, the only reason I mention this is that there is a separate Steam version of um, Virtual Desktop, which isn't the one you need. You need the um, the Oculus, the Meta version, is what you need. And then oh, on this website, you need the uh, the Streamer app. Hey, Andreas. Evening. Right. So once you've downloaded that and you've installed it on your Quest Free, I appreciate this is probably teaching a lot of people to suck eggs, but. Some people won't know how, and they'll ask me. Right, so this is the desktop streamer, and we've got a bunch of settings in here. So the preferred codec, 
So you see you've got Quest 3 exclusively. So that's a new feature of the Quest 3. It's got the uh, new AV1 codec, which is um, what I use for my streaming stuff now. So my streaming PC, as long as um, only caveat is that you need a latest gen GPU. So an Nvidia 4000 series card or the latest AMD, which was 7900 series. Uh, so either of those two will have AV1 encoders built into them. So you'll get these two, you'll be able to use these two options. I don't know if they'll appear in this drop down. I don't know if the, the GUI is intelligent enough to know that you don't have the right card, probably is. If not, then you've got H.264 and HEVC. Um, HEVC is similar-ish to AV1, but was the, the more expensive licensed one. AV1 came about as like the um, open standard, a less royalty restrictive version. So that's the way uh, codecs are going now. So uh, uh, quality wise, that they're actually quite similar. I think AV1 still beats it in a lot of cases now. Uh, but I think compared to H.264, for the same bandwidth, you'll get a lot better image quality with AV1. Um, or for the same I image quality, you can use half the bandwidth that with AV1 that H.264 will would need. So it's just a more compressive codec, a more efficient one. Uh, but it does require quite a bit of GPU power. So it's more demanding than H.264. And also decoding wise, I think it's a little bit more demanding to decode, but you do get a better image quality for using less bandwidth, which is important for latency reasons. Right, so the difference between AV1 and AV1 10-bit is um, the, the, the uh, color, 10-bit colors, the color encoding. So put on AV1 10-bit for the best image. And then audio streaming, I've got this turned off because I don't want extra audio sent to the Meta headset uh, because I've got a separate mixer. I just want the normal PC output. So if you're racing with separate headphones or flying with separate headphones, then you probably want to turn that off and use the, um, the normal audio from your PC. Uh, if you don't, if you want to use the headphones, the, the speakers built into the side, then uh, set it to headset only or if you want to output it for to for recording purposes on a separate pc and the headset you've got both so uh, videos lets you watch um, any videos on your pc it's quite good i've got some 360 ones might as well plug my ham 360 channel here as well if you're not checked out so i've got a separate ham 360 uh, video channel where i do quite a lot of nature uh, videography and I've got a few 360 videos on there as well. So it's a cool thing with uh, VR, best way to, to consume a 360 video is uh, on a VR headset. So I think that's it. Oh, you need to configure, the last thing is you need to configure your Oculus username to use it. Um, I think this is for launching Oculus games you may have bought for PC VR. Can't remember, but it definitely needs it in there, so. So I think that's it for config. Um, yeah, any questions? If not, I'll, I'll attempt to uh, get DCS and Microsoft Flight Sim working. Any preference as to what people want to see first? Doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I've not tested either yet, so either of them might not run. <laughs> Have we got DCS fans or Microsoft Flight Sim fans or neither? If we have time, I might also track out check out Automobile 2. I think someone was um, requesting that earlier. Most people are thinking. Um, oh, did we want to show this over wired link? Yeah. Probably a way to go as we're set up. 
Oh, I, I forgot. One thing I forgot. Open virtual desktop, open XR runtime is the thing I forgot. So, something else I need to edit into the final video. Okay, sorry, how to find the link. So in the live stream video description, there's a link to virtual desktop open XR Git GitHub page for uh, Matt's new fantastic open, open XR runtime for virtual desktop. So if you've used virtual desktop before, you'll notice the limitation is it only works with Steam VR. Well, not anymore. You can now use it with uh, open XR compliant games. Uh, now it is in beta. I don't think it's available on here yet. So this is his page. But I think you can only get a copy of it on his Discord until he takes it out of beta. So if you want to try this out, you can either wait a bit and then it'll be on this page or you can join their Discord. Uh, just keep in mind because it is beta, there's no um, official support. Well, there's no official support anyway. There's something he does in his own time. So the other thing I'll say is if you like using OpenXR Toolkit and you find this tool handy, please go donate to this guy because he's put so much like work into this. This isn't in his main job. So go to this donate button here if you enjoy it, if you use it. I I'm going to set up my uh, sponsorship payment. I just need to create a github account to do it uh, so yeah do that and just pay whatever you think is the right amount you can do recurring payment or a one-off he's always updating this and other apps so it's, it's brilliant the work he does for the vr community especially the sim community they rely so much on his software <laughs> so anyway uh, this is the link to it so you just need to download the um virtual desktop open xr runtime run the installer um, and then when you launch virtual desktop and you launch a steam game just as you would with normal op open xr toolkit it'll open up via the xr runtime and we'll probably check that out later actually when we um we fire it up but uh yeah i just wanted to get that in there right cool oh and if you wonder what the open xr toolkit is there's also another link in the description below for a video I did ages ago. So you can just follow that um, for games that aren't open XR compliant, such as ACC. Um, you need to use something called open composite, which converts the game, it acts as a translator to make it open XR compliant, but DCS and Microsoft flight sim and iRacing are all native open XR compliant. So that does work, but for games that aren't, uh, yeah, check out that video. In the video, it mentions downloading the uh, WMR um, OpenXR runtime. You don't need to do that because this is for a Quest headset and the Quest uh, app has a OpenXR runtime built into it. All right, done. So I think was that, that was it for everything we wanted to do with that. So I'll stop that record there. I've actually got the link for Open Composite, Open XR Toolkit, and that uh, page that I just had open a second ago. All right, cover that off. Cool. So let's attempt to load DCS now in VR. So we we're going to do it with the link cable first, weren't we? And I've got my um, my hotash ready. In fact, I've got two hotasses. So, what's the plural of hotas? Hota, hotai. I'm 
not sure which one to use. I think I've already got bindings for uh, this bad boy. But let's try and get this thing working first before we even attempt to plug more USB devices in. So, fair warning anyone joins, it's going to be a slow stream. <laughs> so, now might be a good time for, for, for a tea break as I uh, try and get this to launch. Or beer break, or whatever you, your uh, favourite beverage is. This, this screen for a minute. Oh, oh wait a minute, I will switch. Oh, wrong button, sorry. So for DCS, for the DCS pilots out there, you probably already know this, but there's a uh, multi-threaded version of the game now, as well as the single-threaded one. So if you're running a modern CPU, you want to run the multi-threaded uh, binary so if I open one of the shortcuts that I've already made, I'm running, um, I'm not using the Steam version of the game. I've got the um, the standalone one direct from them. So the open beta. So I've created a shortcut. I, don't know if, I probably can't see this, it's probably too small, but it's the bin MT. Uh, executable well the bin MT folder you want to access so in my case yeah Eagle Dynamics DCS open beta bin MT DCS exe and then so once you've pointed to the right executable you want some extra command lines force enable VR force open XR I assume this is still required. Um, here's the link on launching it in multi-threaded mode. So I may just paste this back in chat now. They do a video comparing this versus single thread and it is a lot more efficient on uh, a new one. I think will be the way to go, no doubt. Yeah. So um, I did a comparison on ACC last last night, checking um, virtual desktop with virtual desktop OpenXR runtime and the and the OpenXR toolkit versus Link and the OpenXR toolkit. Bear in mind on Link on wired Link, there's only H.264 encoding, but you can crank the bitrate up to 900 megabits per second. Whereas on virtual desktop, the maximum bitrate is 200. But given the bandwidth difference and on the Quest 3, it was using the AV1 codec, which is really like twice as efficient, it's more like a 400 megabit free port on H.264. Um, and there's the um, Snapdragon super, sample, super scaling option. So I actually thought they looked pretty similar and the latency was really good. So the only downside is the battery power. Um, so I don't know if you say if you do a lot of if you don't just do sim racing and you're constantly flicking between wired link and not, then I'd probably just go for the virtual desktop route. Always leave it on that and just get an extra power pack. So when you're not playing seated VR, then you've got it already set up. But uh, yeah, I, I was impressed how good it looks isn't much in it and um yeah it's wireless so the only, the only limitation now is really the power right yeah let's get this fired up
is this going to work? Don't know. I only just ran the update today, so I've not even tested this build. Doing something is taking over my uh, cursor. Because I'm on pass through mode? It's alive! Shortcut for full screen. Might be F9 or something, I don't remember it. F2? Okay. Oh yeah. So, my desk is to my right, but my uh, streaming PC, because it's normally set up for the rigs over there, so that's why I'm looking that way. Well, let's set up a recenter button. So we can tell we're in OpenXR mode now because we're uh, we're on. So first time running this actually, I didn't show you the OpenXR Toolkit app. So once you've installed OpenXR Toolkit, the companion app. We'll get a bunch of settings here. So the question I always get is why can't I see all of these apps? Well, this is just a history of what you've loaded before. Uh, so they only appear in there after you've run them. And here, these I think will be set to uh, a different key bind. On-screen hotkeys. So I've, I've got mine set down to the arrows. I think by default they're set to the F keys. But I, I've got them set to the arrow keys. Uh, so if you have any problems and you want to reset your settings back to default, you can go into safe mode and press Control F1, 2, and 3, and that'll re reset all of your settings back to original. So, yeah, I think that's it. I think we're all open XR'd out. And that, that's the um, Pimax runtime for if you're using the crystal and you want to enable eye tracking that's what that is if you, for those wondering my dough is out of focus so it is reset I'm on VR Remembered ones. I'd obviously set these up a while ago when I was testing. Go with VR first. Audio. That looks correct. Plane should we take. Take the Apache because I can't fly it. For the life of me. It's an action. Uh oh. I've not plugged in my hotas. Oh, I've got it goes funky when it's loading the textures in for the first time because it's updated today. But this is the latest open beta build. I'll turn the music off in a minute. That's for uh, airborne. That's pretty sharp, actually. How are we doing frame time? 91. Okay. 
This is a free flight mission. They used to become familiar with basic aircraft handling. Or just explore the area. Those lights. How's that for volume? All right. Then we just need to get our our controls set up. Should have done that first. Oh, and the other thing, the old blue tr blue tick, blue tack trick. Stop your headset going into a sleep mode if you're uh, streaming stuff. <laughs> All right, it's back. That was the stick. Here comes the throttle. Hope I don't overload the air. The USB hub. Well, not the hub, but the PC, the sockets. It's been a long time since I've uh, played this. Right, now it's a case of find out which button I map to uh Oh, there's a control in F twelve. There you go, which way is the camera? There you go. Let me face you up. Is where I need to get some adapters to fit, connect this to, uh, to my rig. Uh, as um. So I've got quad views enabled, which obviously won't eye track, but I can just about make out the edges of the box. Oh, that's pretty sharp. That's good. I'm on a free flight mode, so I won't have any weapons. Enabled. Anyone remember the key to turn off the uh, symbols? It's one of the. Uh... Okay, it's not that one. Look at that! That was pretty epic to me. Does that look good? I'm a wingman, literally. Thank you very much. I'm, all, I'm here all night. Oh, I carry on the carriage down. No, I do have weapons. I'm sorry, I had a missile. Apologise Alpha Alpha yeah. for any proper DCS hardcore players. I don't really know what I'm doing. Alpha 
I got these modules when they're in the sale of the intention of learning this properly. One of our friends, he's really into this, so he was going to shoot me. So he did like the Apache as the gunner for a bit. So I can't really fly it, but I can shoot the guns on the Apache. But it's just finding time to put into this game to learn how to play it. Turn off the symbols. Oh. The bases are just mashing the F keys. Pitch dropped to 40. 45. So reprojection must have kicked it. Surprised that's on. I thought I'm on um, turbo mode. I've not used OpenXR Toolkit before. It's like a load of settings in, in here you can change. Um, so the main one is the upscaling sharpening option. So these middle two, NIS is NVIDIA Image Scaler, I think, and FSR is AMD's um, upscaler. I can't remember which stands for now. And CAS is the uh, adaptive sharpening. So if you use one of these scalers, you can specify what size you want to upscale from. So if I left it on that, you need to restart the game when you change this, by the way, for it to take effect. But you can um, say I want it to render 85% of what you're seeing now and it'll upscale it to the current target resolution. Uh, but I tend to leave it on that unless the game's struggling massively. So you can do a bit of sharpening. And then there's these menus at the top you can toggle through. Into the menu. Just try not to crash. Here you can override the display resolution. It's a handy one. So if you want to squeeze a bit more of resolution than what the um the Oculus app is saying so when we did the setup you know you got the slider you can move over to 1.5 times you can actually go right forget what resolution so if we left it on no it'll leave that resolution we saw in the Oculus app if you move over to override resolution you can now jump in here and push even more pixels through so this is like a way to do super sampling um, in, in the case that you don't have Steam VR because we're actually bypassing Steam VR in this case. We're using the OpenXR version of the uh, the game, so that's where you do your super sampling here. Um, and then the other thing I use a lot is the uh, fixed foveated rendering. So I tend to have that on uh, performance and wide balanced. Narrow just reduces the um, the size of the uh, foveated rendering, but I don't I don't think it's actually doing anything because I've got quad views enabled, which is for the um, Pimax eye tracking. But uh, it would work for you if you haven't installed quad views. If you probably haven't, unless you've got like uh, either Pimax Crystal or the Quest Pro that's got eye tracking. We go. So we're talking. Go down. Bring the uh, full FPS info. So you can 
and see if you get GPU or CPU constraint. But this is running no problem. 91 FPS on the standard VR preset. So, probably got a lot of headroom in either the settings, game settings, or the uh, resolution. We can turn this up further. I probably will do, see. Turn the resolution up, see at what point it breaks. Custom one, custom two. Visibility range is extreme. Okay, so custom two seems a bit easier. This must have been presets I was testing the Pimax crystal. We'll try the the highest one. Vis visibility extreme. Res of the cockpit ten twenty four. I think I'll restart the game. So, how are we doing, people still there? Chat has gone quiet. Yep, we're still there, cool. Be so bad. I can't remember which key it is to reset the view now. What is shift and something? It's because the window's out of focus or something. Right. Oh. I don't want to click that. Cancel. Controls. There is for this game, yeah. It's a flight simmer's dream, though. Shooting to realism and configuring every single thing. So, right control and F12. Can someone remember that? Can right control and F12. Where? Uh. <laughs> Alright. Uh, instant action. Did you take off? So you're F18. Get to uh, is it missions? I want to do a um, super carrier takeoff. I'll start super carrier launch. Is that the one? You got catapult one ready for launch. 
advanced throttles, full power takeoff. Let's do that. Highway to the danger zone. Cruise ain't got shit on me. Bump the uh, the resin stuff up. We should should be fine at sea. <laughs> See if it actually is the supercarrier. I've done it. Oh yeah, there's bods. It must be. Catapult one ready for launch. Adventure throttle for a full power takeoff. Okay, let's fly. Shit. Salute. Just throttle up, is that it? I think that's it. This is where I break the undercarriage because I can't remember what the undercarriage but is bound to. Throttled up. Forty six, so it must be um on reprojection mode like I should tell. Maybe in the um opposite steeple tool and to turn off space warp. Shouldn't be doing it if I've got it on thingy rejig. Fine then. Oh, it's on auto. Alright, send it off. Over there. There's a slight performance cost running um Octus Mirror. It's not much though. Right, 73. Oh he's gone. Got fed up away. Right. I think it's one of the F keys now to talk to the uh, the crew to tell them we'll. Okay, hit that. Escape? All he says to talk to the um, control tower. I'll throttle down, throttle up. I'm ready! Well, there must be someone in chat knows what button I need to press to get this puppy off. DARPA. <laughs> We're melting. Let's ease off of it. 65 FPS. That was pretty good though. Insert keys, one of these. Oh. Oh shit. That's mute. Reminds me of when I used to play Flight Sims as a kid and never had the manuals. Just end up mashing the keyboard until something happens. All I have to burn it. I'm sure previously when I've done this, all I had to do was throttle up. Let me put the wheels up when I'm on the deck, it wasn't to crash. You know, Microsoft Flight Sim is a bit easier. You can just go and it works. I don't need to read the, read the manual. Okay. Right, let's find a mission where we're in the air then. 
Not so anyone knows. Take the um, A10. Ten two, Persian Gulf, free flight. This has got a lot of stuff to render. This will test it. Oh yeah, fifty to fifty FPS. No, no, we're kicking its ass. But 90 hertz, we need to be um, getting 11.1 milliseconds overall, and CPU time we're on 4. Point, well, 5, well, 5 milliseconds. So it's not like we're CPU constrained; we must be GPU constrained here. So this is extreme visibility. This is where we might want to enable the uh, upscaler. Yeah, it's chugging along. So it's said space walk. So it looks like I should smooth it out. See if it's usable. It's alright, it just, it just wobbles a little bit when it's creating the fake frames. What is pretty cool with the, uh, the Quest 3, because it's so light, you're turning your head quite a lot. You're not having the, um, the extra weight of a bigger headset like the Crystal. You can tell the resolution isn't anything like what it is on the crystal. Well, it's good enough though. It's definitely a big step up from the Quest 2, that's for sure. And now we're running what? Steady 45? 46? I don't know how smooth that's looking in the stream now. I don't, know if I don't know if it picks up also when I tilt my head because I've got quad views on. You can see the area where um, the out eye tracking outer region will be on. So if you had the Quest Pro, I'll, you could configure that to move depending on where you're looking. See everything clearly. And even on the right eye, there's like a, you can see the heads up display box. See which eye am I showing? Am I showing the left eye or the right eye? So it's the right eye. <clears throat>
But unless there's a certain map people want to see on DCS, oh, I've got the gun. Breep. I didn't realise the gun was hot. Let's go. Pull up, pull up. Let's go over to the um, the sailboat building. Do an outside view. Fly by. Sounds so cool. One more time. What a machine. So I got this because I, if I was doing missions, I'd rather do like air to ground missions. But unfortunately, this is one of the most complicated aircraft to learn. That and the Apache is also the other most complicated aircraft. See if we can, can we get through the gap. I don't think we can, but we're going to try. Pull up, pull up. Oh yes. Oh, my webcam not moving. Nvidia Studio has crashed the webcam. <laughs> so on OBS, on my preview, everything's frozen, but I can see the stream still going. But the webcam is frozen, has it? My head's. <laughs> I can see on the stream feed is look. I'm locked, looking pull to up, the right. All right. Let's see if we can fix that. Might be a good good point to uh, switch games to, to uh, Microsoft Flight Sim. One more flyby. <laughs> right. I just play that for hours. Right, see what's... Uh, if I change scene, does it fix it? Gonna has the scene changed? It's just the webcam. Alright, I'm gonna stop OBS and start it again. I fixed it. I'll take a few seconds to uh come back live again. Am I back? Can you hear me? Thanks for letting me know, by the way. A lot of people just let me carry on the entire stream with my head snapped. Or it frozen. Right. Time for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Is it out of that? So, I can't remember if I've played this since I got the 4090. I think I did a benchmark of it. So, I got the um, Microsoft Ultimate Pass. So, you, get, you can get it included with that. launch this and it just starts I don't have to do anything Google has to launch into VR mode
Anyone remember? Or is there a setting I have to go into in the game? Set to VR mode and reboot the game. You just remember it crashing. <laughs> Fond memories. Right. I should have researched how to launch this in VR before I uh, put it in the stream title. Let me Google search like a noob. How to launch Microsoft Flight Simulator in VR. I'll just check my terminal here. Where's the audio gone? <laughs> yeah, the updates for this. Oh my god, you better have a fast internet connection, or you'll, otherwise you'll be there for weeks. In fact, it did it once. Didn't install correctly after downloading however many hundred gig it is, and it didn't work. Ah, oh, there's a menu, is there? Launch your VR headset application, OpenXR. Launch Microsoft Flight Simulator. Put your headset on. Enter the command to switch to VR. Please check your bindings. Or click on the button, VR mode tab in Options General. Options. General options. Aha, right there it is. I will move it over so you can see. So I'm going to turn to VR and then is there a profile? If anyone's got like a good set of settings. Like what they want me to test on the 4090 and the Quest 3, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to run it out of the box. <laughs> Let's go with standard, because that, that'll be a good baseline. start flying now will it just turn it on maybe it will light training no. let's go to discovery flights Something you 
easy. Hopefully this should just kick in. Yeah, it doesn't look like it, is it? Ready to fly. At least the hotel house is connected. It's a start. Maybe I need to restart the game once I've changed the graphics. General options. VR. Go down to VR mode, switch to VR. We're in business, but now it's blocking the uh, stream. Thank you for flying with Ham Airlines. This background music keeps going loud and quiet. All right. to set the pilot view. Okay. Escape is resume. There we are. We're we back in the plane, is it F keys? Space is recenter VR. Obviously, let's have the uh, stats on. Anything else? One of these buttons is bound to change view. Oh, we're in. Finally. Standard preset. Well, we get that bit better. Turn on foveated rendering in a minute. Oh, I want to hit 90. I know a lot of people tend to go for um, 45 and re use reprojection. Balanced. Oh, that's on the edges. 88, 90. We've hit 90, baby. Obviously, on the stream, all the edges are a bit pixelated.
How's that look? Oh, you can definitely see the left eye and the effoviated rendering on the right hand side. <laughs> no, cause I, I don't know if everyone bothers with all the, uh, the settings I've turned on. They also probably don't use the standard presets. Oh, also, I mean, we're, we're not hit, stuck on 9. Oh, we're on 90 now. There is more. There's more. What else have we got? So, we're not using any of the upscalers, but there's no point. You might as well use the in-game DLSS. I bet if we turn DLSS on, we can uh, reduce the foveated rendering. Should we try that? It's sharp in the middle. I can just see the edges of the foveated rendering. Uh, general options. Auto. Quality. Balanced. Performance. Try balanced. Go from there. Why is it? Boom. Boom. In fact, it's smoothed out the foveated rendering as well. It's a side effect. So it's not less, less noticeable. Turn off foveated rendering now. We've got enough headroom. So, because the arrow keys are bound, every time I move the um, performance toolkit menu, it's just moving my head in, in the uh, cockpit. Uh, off. Oh, that's, that's alright. Oh, yeah, now we're talking. Right. Cooking on gas. Yeah, that's smooth. Oh, that's pretty clear. What is the balance? Do you want super high resolution and run it at 45 FPS and reprojection? Or do you want native smoothness and just a loss of clarity with the LSS on? Because I found with... Um, when it's reprojections on, sometimes the propeller blade, you can see it wobbling. Oh, we dipped to 89 then. Some, I can say something wrong with the runway, but it's not, it's the, uh, the highway. Would anyone like to see me fly over a particular location? Since it's flight simulator, I believe we can go practically anywhere in the world. Where are some of the viewers from? We can go over your home city. But first, we're going to climb the volcano. Is my webcam still working? It looks like it is. Let me know if it crashes again. It's got text to speech on, I can hear it. What I've not done is I could probably pop the chat out. But you do get a slight performance hit for doing that. How's that? Hidden away little house. We don't have any requests. We may go to uh, New York next because that's got a lot of buildings to render. That should uh, bring it to its knees. What does work? Oh. I thought the uh, the paddles here would have been left and right rudder, but it must have been um, <laughs> something else. <laughs> I cut the engine or... Um, yeah, okay. Tr trimmed it somehow. Denver, Colorado. Alrighty. Let's see if we can remember how to do it. Uh, back to main menu. Yes.
music. Yeah. What's them finding stuff? Create a flight and uh, explore the world. Let's do that. Um, select departure. Colorado, air and space. Over the spaceport? And then we've got the city over there. It's not going to be night time. Okay. Okay, it's in real time, right? What aircraft? I think I'll set to light ones because they're easier for me to manage. The helicopter? These are pretty cool, the icons. They're really maneuverable. So. Oh. Oh, it's showing the night time. Is it because it's night with me? Take that. Can I set the time? I thought it automatically know the local time. Well, there we go. Two, two ish. On the runway. Select arrival. Oh yeah. Live. I've done it. Ever in time live. Where do we want to go to? Does it matter? How about that? Alright, let's go, let's see if we can take off. Oh, we're in that in the air already. I want them available, but I don't want to block the view. I'll turn those off, I'll never figure out to turn back on here. Where the hell am I? We can see the stars wherever we are. Wherever we are. Alright, there's a runway. It's asking to be landed on. Campo de something? Is it are we in Brazil? Crash land and we'll try again.
tub for more solutions. Light assist. I jump to a place without going back then. Airports. to tell I play this game all the time. Time of day? Oh wow. Change the time of day just like that. There's a way to just change locations to Sixty FPS and again eighty eight. Not bad though. So we could obviously drop the um the refresh rate in the Oculus app down to seventy two hertz. It it'd probably hit seventy two locked quite easily. Well we're on seventy nine ninety now again. That's probably worth doing, I might try that in a minute. If I have to pick a number airport, probably on 72, see if that's uh, smoothed it out for us. What the hell's going on with these buildings? Oh my god, there's been a war. of the plane. Oh no, it just moves me. Yeah. But even if I go down to 72, so this is what, I've not tried the um, 72 hertz on the crystal yet. I think it's only just been uh, pushed out on test. So for flight sims, where you're not like, you don't need the high speed refresh rate like you do in say an F1 sim where 120 hertz would probably be ideal um, the flight sims the smoother pace so you either go for um, reprojection space warp or you, you have a lower native frame rate um, refresh rate on the headset so the one thing I struggled with on the G2 it's only got 90 hertz and 60 hertz and I tried 60 on a good physics I could see the screen strobing at 60. I could never use it. So that meant I always had to get a game, get it to run at 90. So let's actually try 70 hertz. So we'll come back and then we'll try and find Colorado properly. Oh, you don't have it yet. Yeah, it's only been um, pushed out to people that have volunteered to be guinea pigs. Um, Pimax said they were, they were going to push it out to me this week. I've just, it's them to time at the same time the Quest Free's launched and WRC, so I've not tried it yet. What's been crashed? Quest 2? Or do you mean the Quest 3 that I'm wearing now? The 
So if, if we're saying the crystal's a 10, I'd say this is like um, a 7. Six and a half to seven. I'd put it well, maybe a bit more, maybe seven and a half. I'd put the G2 at a seven. Yeah. It's funny because with the, the G2, you, you don't get any link compression, but the Fresnel lenses give you a lot more ghosting. So you like trading one against the other. So, in that respect, I think they're even. But the extra FOV adds makes this a better visual experience for me, anyway. All of these things are sort of a personal preference. Why can't I quit the game? Which which free? <laughs> and what? That that's that's me assuming the crystal's ten. So that's that's a rel it's a relative scale. If it's an absolute scale of like the crist you know, ten's the best headset in the world. Well, beyond better than anything that exists, then it wouldn't be a ten. The Apple Pro Vision would be close to a ten, probably. <laughs> then the, the Pimax would be like an eight or so uh, nine. In fact, what's the, is the resolution the same? I don't know what I'd like to try with the um, what's going on? Those flight sim, damn you. Is that so? So far, I've been um, I've been surprised to the quest free. It, it, it is until Deckard appears, then I might be tempted by that. Um, I was looking what other headsets are available. Let's take the headset off for a minute. Oh, I could just do pass through mode, couldn't I? <laughs> Lost my train of thought now. Yeah. So I'm take it, take it off for a minute. I'll, I'll set up seventy two hertz with the headset off for a minute. Oh yeah, I was gonna say the uh, the Quest Three has actually surprised me. I I didn't think it was gonna be as good. As Lincoln was saying, it's really got as a stopgap because the the crystals are loner. So I'm gonna have to return it once I've finished doing reviews, stuff on it. But because they're adding new features, I'm just waiting for them to um, well, I want to send two hertz and also test the the FOV lens, the wider FOV. So I wanted something replace upgrade from the quest 2 because all like although i like the g2 i found i can't wear it for a long period because of the um the small sweet spot i find it's quite fatiguing on my eyes oh yeah so i was, I was asking um lincoln how does the quest pro visuals compare to the quest 3 in terms of fov and visuals that, that was my question from earlier. Um, share my screen. So, drop it to 72 hertz. Recommended. <laughs> so, the um, rendering resolution stays the same. It's just, it's saying it's 1.3 times. Save and restart. Space warp. Disable again. You didn't like the comfort of the G2. Oh, it's quite comfy. Super the 
chat over. It's obscured by this other monitor. Because I'm sat at my desk, my um, monitor setup's a bit different than normal. So things are all over the place. No Lincoln's port. Although the Quest 3 has a wide FOV, the Pro, the Quest 3 feels shorter and binocular, really. I wonder if your eye distance is um, further away or something. Could be. There's one thing I did notice in the um, unbox is the size of this face gasket. It's quite deep, given how um, short the actual headset is. And it's obviously the the eye box, if you want to call it that, for the gasket. It's got adjustment for um, glasses. I bet aftermarket um, face gaskets will give you some more FOV. You'd be able to test it by just clipping it off and pu pushing it close to your eyes and see at what point you see the edges of the screen. Um, I saw there's a dock for this now. Lots of people, the, the Oculus ambassadors have been sent the, the proper dock for free. I like one, but I'm not spending 130 pounds on one. <laughs> it's a bit pricey. Um. Another thing is the strap. I don't mind the strap. I'd, I got I got on with the strap on the Quest 2. A lot of people don't like it, but I find it works well with um, over the ear headphones. I find with hard straps that are on like the uh, the G2 and the Index and even the uh, the Crystal, it's like you have to find the right kind of headphones that'll arch over them, like with the uh, same the PSVR2. At least these thin floppy straps, which I find comfortable. I know it keeps the thing light as well. Easy to carry if I want to take it travelling, and then handy for headphones. But I can see I can see why some people swap them. If I was going to swap the strap, I'd get one with a battery on it, probably, because I can see myself do more wireless uh, VR now that virtual desktop works so well. All right, we're in seventy-two hertz mode. Let's. Go back, we're off to Colorado, aren't we, next? to change why turn it off all right close that i think there is if you want to check if you want to turn it off in the settings it'll be in the um oculus standalone settings i think it's not handled by the pcbr menus can I not make a shortcut for Oculus Mirror Blanks out the um, 
Oculus Mirror View when it's when it's at. How much you see that at the contrast? Full screen. There you go. See if I'm seeing good. Now oh, there's book, Game on Scorpio, Virtual Desktop Quest. And if you've seen PCVR and No Man's Planet. So I'll probably be seeing them free tomorrow. So in uh, VR related news, it's at EGX. So I'm going there tomorrow, which is like one of the UK's biggest gaming shows. So I'm thinking of live streaming it. There's a VR showcase on at 6.30. So I'll have to find out if I'm allowed to um, live stream that show to the channel. Zacharia, how comfortable is, you mean the Quest 3? It's more comfortable than the Quest 2. <laughs> it doesn't ask you a question. Yeah, I, I find it comfy. I'm trying to think, probably the Valve Index might be my most comfortable headset. I don't know, this is pretty damn comfortable though. The face gasket material could be a less bit less grippy. I don't worry, people have said Quest 2 quite a few times as well tonight. Yeah, it's comfortable. Um, a lot of people didn't get on with the Quest Pro, surprisingly, because of the the the, uh, the forehead. Some some people's heads it doesn't. It's, it's kind of, I think you adjust the uh, the eye relief by adjusting the forehead position. That's right, you know, Lincoln. Lincoln's gone. How is? Your stream just came in. Actually, what I should do? I should add a panel. Uh, I need to put chat. Get to my own stream. Here, double for a second. I think the Quest 3 G2 is nice for your eyes, shield, strain, heart. Yeah, that's the exact same problem I had with the G2. Lincoln seemed fine with his. You could just race for hours of it, but after about an hour or so, that's why I ended up using the Quest 2 more than the um, the G2. The thing that got on my nerves was the uh, link kept dropping. The wired link. Um, so obviously if I use virtual desktop now, that eliminates that problem. However, since then, toying around with link cable and the power settings to the USB socket, I think that might have solved, oh my god, what have I just done? Want to move? Massive, massively better in terms of eye strain, I think. So the Quest 2, for example, and I think it's the same for all the Oculus headsets, that they've gone. So, so when you design a lens, you can either go two routes, you either go like G2 have done, you go for maximum clarity in the middle, and then quite a big drop off on the edges um, so that they basically design the lens so the, the center there isn't much distortion particularly on the Fresnel lenses and then as you go further out it's having to bend a lot more of the the barrel distorted image or with a Fresnel lens you could have um, if, if you look at if you look at a Quest 2 lens compared to a G2 lens and see the spacing on the uh, concentric circles on the G2, it's quite big in the middle and then lots of concentric circles on the outside. If you look at the Quest 2 Fresnel lenses, they're pretty even and uniform, so that means it's easy on your eyes. You lose a bit of clarity around the dead center, 
but it's a lot more comfortable to wear. So it's kind of you end up with a more uniformly um, uniform image. So you don't get as sharp in the middle. But for that, it gives it one. It gives it a bigger sweet spot. But two, it makes it more comfortable on the eyes for longer periods because you're not having to just always look forward. Because what what I end up doing, you just end up turning your head on the G2 more to get the perfect image. And then when you can't be, when you forget, you just you, you, your eye strain to try and look in the edges where it's, whereas on the Quest 2 and the Quest 3 now with uh, even bigger FOV in the pancake lenses which are much clearer than the Fresnel lenses still not as clear as the um, aspheric lenses on the crystal and the contrast is a lot better with local dimming on the crystal Quest Pro's got local dimming but uh, Link said that colour wise look very similar and Link's put comfort on the Pro and Quest 3 about the same. Not all comfortable, but not that bad either. Oh, there you go. Uh, wait, sorry, waffling. We need to get to Colorado, don't we? Where was the options? You have to go into general options and switch to VR. VR mode. Kind of bizarre, I think. How do you get to VR? Oh, there must there must be a shortcut way to launch the game in VR mode, like a certain sort of command line parameters when you start the game. Okay, you seen that? Buying a chat window here. Yeah. Oh, I didn't pin it, that's why. What I do like about Oculus software actually is um, the panel implementation. It's a lot easier than Steam VR if you want to pin a panel. You can do it on Steam. That are factor two. I did try it ages ago actually. But they fixed the menu system. The menu used to be really confusing and basic. Right, select departure. For this now is it, is it GT GT GT? <laughs> well, someone asked for this airport, so here we go. Well, this location should say it's airport. Where's my controls? Tower icon Alpha Sierra X ray Golf Sierra ready for straight out departure at runway oh, yeah, 26. Boy. Right. Icon Alpha Sierra X ray Golf Sierra altimeter 290 decimal minor 2 wind 332 at 1 2. Straight out departure approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 26. Haha, <laughs> Cleared for takeoff runway 26 Icon X-Ray Golf Sierra. Feel very fancy with this official air drive control tool. There must be a button to quickly hide all this crap. I don't know, close them. I don't need you. Where are we going? We don't need nav. Alright, LW. Right. Right, we're doing 73. Alright, so we've uh, dropped the refresh rate. That's why we <laughs> we had a break. We dropped it down to 72 
hertz refresh rate. So hopefully we're going to lock it now. With DLSS on. Right, let's go. LW. Is it? Is that it? What's LW? Is that the name of the airport? I'm in the wrong part of Colorado. Hello, is it better than the G2? Yes, I think so. Oh, flaps. One of them is going to be the parking brake. Okay, so that's the. F that's why we nosedived earlier. So, let's take off. Probably that. It must be take off flaps. No, that was requested. Never requested. Okay. Oh, what has this got to be the parking brake? Is it B for brake? Oh, thanks for the sub. Red, every dad. Anyone know the, the keyboard press to unlock the. I can use the mouse, can't I? The landing gear. This is why I picked the easy aircraft, it should be foolproof. Bilge. It's landing on water because this thing. It's throttle. Sneeze so off a minute so we find the brake. Water rudder. Parking brake, okay. Yes, we did it. I'm using this. If I can do it without crashing. Yeah. T1, T1000, is it? Like the Terminator. Yeah, we're off. Then the International Airport's to our right. Well, whoever it was, they probably gave up because we took so long to come here, but we're here. We should go to, um, it's called Lake Rapids. Is that right, Link? Something like that. In the Lake Mi Michigan. Yeah, I've got. I've actually got two. I've got the PlayStation compatible Hotas, and I played it so much with Star Wars Squadrons that it's now got like the rudder doesn't work on Twist. On Twist, it sort of drifts all the time. So this second one came up on offer on uh, Amazon, so I grabbed it because it's quite good for um, a bit more power. I think we need to change the flaps for a storm takeoff flaps. Grand Rapids. Right. Here we go. Trim. You should just the trim so we're not fighting it all the time. Right click zooms, scare the crap out of me. <laughs> ah! What's the thing? Maybe it's another lever. There's usually a round dial for, for just in the pitch trim. Oh, this thing is up at the minute. That's also for all. Let's see what's randomly assigned to some of these. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Flaps. 
A lot of it's auto bound. It also detected the uh, this house. This landing gear. I'm just waiting for that trim, the button that makes the, that trim line down. So I'm not. No, I'll just push forward. Right. Grand Rapids, Michigan. We're about 20 minutes from our airport. All right. Could uh, go that way in a bit. You have a direct drive on your H3 Motion Sim. It's got lazy. Switch out for your Yoke and Hotas. Yeah, that's the thing I do. I was looking at um, modular aluminum. Aluminum? Aluminium. <laughs> I'm just going to give Lincoln now because he was on the uh, the Crew Cash show. And he, he basically blamed me for him spending $15,000. <laughs> On his sim rig. But to be fair, it isn't just a sim rig, that's three PCs. One with a 3080, one with a 3090, one with a 4090, and a sim rig, and a Fanatec DD1, and a few other bits. Oh, several head VR headsets. I'm not watching Denver, there's lots of fields. We should go to London next. Clear through the Bravo airspace icon, X ray Golf Sierra. Well, we've got a, um, a large commercial plane taking off. I'm not sure what it is. There's seven. Say 747, that's a jumbo. 767? It's probably a way of by clicking it you can find out what it is. I think this is the wrong plane for such big expanses. This is a good one for flying around like Metropolis is like. Let's do a quick touch down. Also, because this is amphibious. This is a good one for um, like Vegas. That land on the Hoover Dam, done that before. We'll go to London, should we go to Swing in London next? We'll land on the Thames. And then we'll take a trip to uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, something faster. I don't know if there's anyone got any more um, destinations you'd like to check out. Form was the undercarriage button. Landing flaps. This is uh, a bit unorthodox. Well, landing gear is down. So we're over flying with it. Don't crash. We can do it. Oh. It was a bit rough. We're out of it. Bounce. It's going to be touch and go. Roll it out. Roll it out. Stall warning. I think we will be a banned for life from this airport. Let's try on the uh, taxiing area. Uh, commercial airlines. Power. How small we are compared to those. Alright, if we hit the brakes now, are we going to like. Because there's no reverse throttle. Down here, isn't it? What's going to happen if I pull this thing? Yeah. 
<laughs> right, there we go. One successful takeoff and landing. Can we just go there then? Oh. We have to go back. New York, London. Huh. I need to buy shit. Oh, is it for that activity? Okay. What about New York? Do I need to buy stuff for that? Or maybe oh, I can just fly out. Right, we're going to New York then. A drone. Okay. There we go. Can't remember how do we get back in the airplane. So seventy two FPS now. I was dropping to forty something. Oh no, that's throttle. I want to turn the engine on. Do the buttons on the... Pause, don't want that. Stop. Oh, there we go. Right, remember it's that button. Throttle, please. Sixty six FPS, fifty four. I right, so certainly sh struggle in a bit, I think, with all these buildings, but I guess it's the uh, an extreme example. Let's right, try and uh, land on the uh, Hudson, isn't it? The Hudson River. Empire State. Actually, let's do a quick, quick uh, trip to it Coney Island, the Empire State. Well, not Empire, it's actually Liberty. Have been to, been to New York once. Um, well, there wasn't the One World Trade Center. There was nothing. I don't think which year it would have been. Two thousand eight. So many buildings, man. I think Tokyo might be the most demanding. City to render. It's either this, this or Tokyo. We're still at 73 now. Are oh, we getting close to the water? Look out the window 38, 50, 60, 72. If we look to my left. So standard settings of DLSS on, and the uh, resolutions maxed out on the Quest. What, what do we have on the uh, ProtectR toolkit? Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Try to reach the keyboard. I'll look in a minute. We'll do a, a lap around the um, Statue of Liberty.
she is. Oh, we're in a different aircraft, you can't land this one. <laughs> Insert key, get out the drone. They're going to auto pilot there. Yeah. Oh. There's two people in there now. Who's flying with me? So, yeah. He's flying, I'm not. Oops. Right. So, main menu. We'll, we'll go to London next. <laughs> oh, I thought someone else was flying it. So he gave me two people. Maverick activities. Anyone done them? Play free. Go back. Until it comes back around again. Three. Could try one of these. No. It's gonna require a download. Which is in progress. It said free. Right. Well, what's it? Can it play and download? All right. I thought it all it auto um, start the autopilot if I deployed it. All right. Um, activities. Now we want to do world map, don't we? And then we're going to take this bad boy again, and we'll go from London Heathrow. Be a bit dark. Let's do uh, not live custom. Let's do it daytime so we can see what's going on. Oh, I lost it. My London Heathrow. Let's go. Any UK viewers? Tower Icon Alpha Sierra X Ray Golf Sierra at runway 27 right, ready for departure, straight out departure. Icon Alpha Sierra X Ray. That very handy. So I'll know which direction I'm going. We want to go east to to the city. Well, easy to tell you. Take off flaps already on. Let's go. Because this is meant for water, the minimum takeoff distance is amazing. More in the air. And then which port was it? What for? Uh, 
I won't guess, I'll just press the button. Probably see the shard from here. Yeah, there it is in the distance. This is uh, West London. Well, the M25 should be around here. We're going, we're going straight towards the um, center. Is there a zoom on this map? the Thames. Icon X ray Golf Sierra, leaving my airspace frequency change approved. Uh, Tower that tall Icon Alpha Sierra X ray Golf the distance. Sierra frequency change. That's the London Shard. Approach Icon Alpha Sierra X ray Golf Sierra. So that's where the center is. Miles east of Heathrow, 900 feet. Request flight following. Icon blah, blah, blah. So we've got enough fuel to go make it. Walk 747 tree, Icon X ray Golf Sierra. Icon X ray Golf Sierra radar contact, 5 miles east of Heathrow, 800 feet. Altimeter 29 decimal 68. Roger, Icon X ray Golf Sierra. Icon X ray Golf Sierra contact, North Hall approach on 125 decimal 875. Good day. Approach Speedbird 483. Okay, this is definitely the River Thames here. This will snake all the way to the middle. Going to 125.875 Icon X ray Golf Sierra. Nordholt approach Icon Alpha Sierra X ray Golf Sierra 1200 feet. Icon Alpha Sierra X ray Golf Sierra North Holt approach altimeter 29 decimal 68 continue as planned. Icon X ray Golf Sierra contact. What I should do in a minute is um, let me switch to virtual desktop. See how it compares visually. decimal five two five for Icon X ray Golf Sierra. Approach Icon Alpha Sierra X ray Golf Sierra 1200 feet. Icon Alpha Sierra X ray Golf Sierra approach altimeter 29 decimal 67 continue as planned. Icon X ray Golf Sierra contact North Hall approach on 125 decimal 875. Good day. Going to 125 decimal 875 Icon X ray Golf Sierra. I do tell them to shut up. Icon Alpha Sierra X ray Golf Sierra 1100 feet. Uh, shut up. Where's the radio? Oh, I'm 
off. Is that the off button? The radio? Oh, only one. Well, it seems to have shut up there. Alright. We're getting close. It maybe brought a faster plane. Because this is the uh, standard version of the game, I'm not sure how much detail we get in terms of buildings. However, we can see the uh, London Eye, the big wheel. Oh, see um, a dome shape. It's the O2 Arena. Orion. Dips to 42 FPS, then it's back up to 72. 64 now. Still feels alright. Because there's not much Sierra. movement in the flight sims, not too much Sierra, is dropping up. Right, there we go, here's Houses of Parliament coming up on our left, with Big Ben. We used to uh, work not too far from here. There we go, Big Ben's on our left. Icon X ray golf Sierra contact, North Hawk approach on 125.875. Good day. 125.875. And then we've got um, Icon X ray golf Sierra. From the bridge and the shard coming up on the right. Yeah, Lincoln, you're in a tour of London there. You said you always wanted to visit. Yeah, London City dead ahead. Bankers are. to a um, virtual desktop and see how it runs, shall we? Was still awake or did that flight send them to sleep? Oh, we've got the Maverick thing that might have downloaded as well. Check that out in a minute. Quick little break. I'll get OpenXR menu to open on any game, nor do I see any 
an app to select the app. I'm trying to get my Quest 3 working online. Okay. So which game? So it has to be a game that natively supports OpenXR, unless you're using Open Composite. So, Microsoft Flight Sim supports it natively. DCS doesn't even show on the list. So for DCS, um, this is a different startup command. So, okay, so there'll be nothing on the list at all until you first run a game. Uh, so you're talking about the companion now, right? So these, this will be empty if you've never run a game in OpenXR. It's only after you've run a game for the first time it appears in the list. And the reason for that is so you can then decide to opt out of running it with the toolkit. Because once the toolkit knows what the game is, it can you can disable it. So that's why it says enable OpenXR toolkit selectively for each application. It should say, in brackets, that have previously been run on OpenXR Toolkit. <laughs> so that's why that'll be empty. It's not until you've played a game does it populate with each game you've played. So let's quit out of this. Oh, just realised I'm not even showing you on the screen. So... This list here, this will be empty until you've um, run a game with the OpenX Artful Kit. And then every time you play a game, it, it fills into this list here. Uh, and the, the other thing to check is for Oculus settings, general, on the general tab, you want the OpenXR runtime should be set Oculus as active if you use link, link cable. If you're using virtual desktop and not Oculus Link, then this is where you need the uh, brand new virtual desktop Oculus no, virtual desktop OpenXR runtime, which there's link for below, and I uh, covered at the start of the stream. Right. Uh, we were going to quit out of the game, weren't we? And then get virtual desktop sorted. Exit graciously last time because it hung earlier. You're starting DCS. You'll need to um, modify the command line. So for DCS, there's, there's two versions of the DCS binary the executable. There's a single-threaded one and a multi-threaded one. The multi-threaded one, you can specify an extra parameter here. Uh, I think I put a link to um, the documentation. I'll put it in chat again. You have to check that out on how to start it in OpenXR mode. Let's quit or Are you sure you want to quit? last time I quit the game. What was it? 
to end. prove this is working I'm going to unplug the link cable seventy four percent all right well maybe we try um with this uh, virtual desktop and this uh, new virtual desktop OpenXR runtime. Maybe that'll work for you. Um, right. Let's think what I'm doing here now. So I was gonna switch the uh, capture card over. So when I cast, you can see what I'm seeing on the headset and see the uh, virtual desktop stats. streaming for You're like a few hours well done to those that have stuck around two hours or so currently having a ton of issues getting quest free to work on Wi-Fi 6 e does Okay. Um, which which are you using? So I show at the start of the stream. I'm on this one. Links in the description below. I had no no problem so far. I'm about to demo it now. So. Okay. So yeah, I've just got I'm running that that router the TP Link Archer 75 in just standard um Rooted mode, I've not even switched it to access point mode. And I've put the um, my downstairs house router straight into it. So this is running its own separate network currently, it's not acting as an access point. I've got my PC directly connected into that into the TP Link router. And the Quest 2, uh, Quest 3 is connected to it. So it's important that both the, the PC is wired directly connected to the router and on the same network as what the Wi-Fi is for that router, so they're both on the same network. Um, and also I'm sat like one meter from mine, normally sat like two meters when I'm in the rig, so no interference, there's nothing else also on it. So it's on the 6E band, and actually my phone is as well to be fair, so it's the only other device that's on it. And I'm getting about 2.2 uh, gigabits per second connection speed, which is faster than my 
my one gig LAN. <laughs> um, right, fire up virtual desktop software. So you can see what I'm seeing now. You can see the uh, DCS documentation here. Giant. Oh, well, I need to uh, run. Right. Do it here, actually. Don't need that now. Switch you back a minute. You say reveal something I shouldn't have in my computer. So <clears throat> I've just run the MSI for um, Virtual Desktop OpenXR, which I covered at the start of the stream. Look for it now. what settings we've got here. So we've got it set to 90. So we've got the full range. We've got one advantage using virtual uh, desktop is it unlocks 120 FPS, which currently via Meta Link isn't available, but is via virtual desktop. Uh, streaming. Ah, oh, this is the one we wanted. Sorry, what was the one I had then? I always get them mixed up between the two. I think this must be the app. Oh, this is the desktop thing, maybe? Anyway, on the main streaming one, which is the thing of interest, I uh, got it on Godlike, so this basically bumps up the render resolution. I think this is slightly higher than Octopus Link maxed out. Frame rate I got set to 90. Yeah, bit rate maxed out to 200. It'd be nice if that could go higher because I haven't got the bandwidth to do it. It's just I don't know if the um, AV1 decoder on the on the Quest 3 can handle it. And then Snapdragon game super resolutions on. Again, I'm not sure if that works when well, it's on godlike mode because it's already a high resolution, but I've left it on anyway. Synchronous space warp. Should I I'll turn that off. So we're not doing any reprojection, so we'll get the actual speed. Okay. Show performance overlay. Steam VR now. I launch Microsoft Flight Sim from here. So it'll be a good test to make sure it's working. So I'll fire up ACC briefly.
launching in 2D mode. runtime that's not the active one at the minute so that's correct so should be fine but I just want to double check it launches correctly I don't know this one works because I tested it last night so with the OpenXR toolkit installed uh, you you still launch in SteamVR mode with Open Composite enabled it'll launch in open XR mode so you can ignore that so why is it open XR call failed let me see because that's open The runtime says Steam VR. So the virtual desktop OpenXR hasn't enabled correctly, so maybe I've not installed it right. Bear with people. See a quick reboot. It's fine if you sort like stick to one method like Oculus Link or Virtual Desktop, but switching between the two, I'm also casting at the minute. Stop that, get it all working first. Means runtime. <laughs> if in doubt, turn it off and on again. Steam's just completely crashed itself. Don't see if it's fixed it. It's doing that, otherwise I'll reboot. Steam VR mode, which I didn't want, right? So it's working in Steam VR mode, which is fine, but I don't want Steam VR mode on it's running uh, Open XR mode via virtual desktop, which wasn't possible until a couple of days ago.
install the computer. And if you just tuned in, switch into virtual desktop now and uh, try to get the virtual desktop OpenXR runtime working so we can run OpenXR games via virtual desktop. Main Steam VR runtime. Must mean once it's on, it's fine. <laughs> Just uh, switching between Meta Link and this. Has that done it? If it has, I'll recap on what I did.
Maybe. Ah. So, yeah. I was trying to um, set a course, trying to launch it, thinking I had it in open composite mode. I must have switched it back to Steam VR mode for testing. So I'm hoping now it'll launch it correctly. So it, it's quite an upgrade, I think. I think the lens lens is a, a lot clearer, which makes a big difference. It's G2 level of resolution now. So it depends if you thought G2 was enough. But it's, it's G2 resolution, but spread out with bigger overall uh, clarity rather than the tiny sweet spot the G2 has. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's worth it, but I'm, I'm into VR and I was okay with the Quest 2. Um, if you, have you tried a G2? If you're happy with the clarity of the G2 in the middle, just think of that, but bigger and less um, god rays or ghosting with the pancake lenses. Just fiddling around with virtual desktop at the minute. Running beta software. Trying to figure out what I broke last night when I had it working. Hence why I'm not showing my desktop. <laughs> but once I've got it going, I'll explain how I've got it set up. There's a question, how many that are watching now have a Q2 and upgraded... I'm saying Q2 now, Quest 2 and upgraded to Quest 3. I know Lincoln has, or he, he, might, he might be um, AFK. If 
can't get the OpenXR um, error form factor unavailable. I don't know what could cause that. Didn't have that last night, and I don't think there was any updates. Was there a was there an ACC update today? Dirt Rally, see if that'll work. Don't you hate it when you test something like the night before and then when you go live you want to demo it, it's like it stops working. I don't know if it's user error or if something's updated somewhere. Say, Link, I had to get a couple of fights in. Oh, you've been doing a thrill of the fight in mixed reality. You mentioned that. So, uh, Link's been playing it and he, he said he jumped out of his seat because he, he had it in mixed reality mode and he saw someone move in his room and it's the referee. <laughs> he thought it's a real person. Made me laugh when you told me that story. Well, you told it on the stream of me. I just needed to reboot the quest. Ugh. Computers. You do nothing and you just restart something and it works. Right. Now I have to cast this and then it will break something else when it will work for me. To be fair, I haven't tried all the games either. So. What is that? Yeah, the quest too. Kind of strange that would be causing a problem, but I had it early, didn't I? With a quest link wouldn't work either until I rebooted the headset.
I just, I just want to prove um, get ACC up and running with virtual desktop and OpenXR which I had going yesterday just thinking Dude, I can see the OpenXR toolkit info. There's my controller because I'm not in my rig, I'll just use my Xbox controller. But I just want to prove this works and show people on the stream because people it's quite loud, isn't it? These days, people only want to play ACC and VR if it's got OpenXR toolkit support. So you bypass Steam, otherwise it's a dog to run. Uh, what am I going to unplug? Unplug the Hotas briefly. I'll switch the screen in a minute. I just want to... Right, let's... Yeah, let me get it casting and then I'll change the background. So th this is always like a double hop because I'm using virtual desktop to cast the image from the PC to the headset. And then so you can see what I'm seeing on virtual desktop I'm now casting the, the MetaQuest freeze image to the Chromecast. <laughs> uh, so obviously you wouldn't ever want to do this other than you're trying to show people the um, performance data of virtual desktop. All right. I don't know if this will work or if there's just too much for it. My god it's working, right. Here we go. Totally wireless. We've got the virtual desktop info here. Six gigahertz. 1921 megabits. On to 14 now. It goes up to two. So, and if I go down, there you can see we've now. Quality wide mode. You see, I'm uh, mucking around with the settings here. So, that coming through all right? Yeah, cool. Hit the record button. Right. Options. Video. Um, one custom. It's video. That's my point again. So I've got these presets available. I did a um, ATC performance benchmark on the crystal, and I created a custom preset. So which one was it? Crystal Epic OpenXR. So it's based on the Epic preset. I just turn the number of cars down. And then um, I was able to turn some of these up a bit because it's a lower resolution headset than the crystal. You, you got to bump this up to about, I think, 140 before I had any problems. And then back. Single player. Bathurst. Oh, hang on. Let's make sure the controls are. Uh... Gamepad. Yeah. 
Mount Panorama AI test run. What time of day is it? Daytime. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't know. It's, is it that good? I can't tell because I'm looking through the VR. It's reasonable. You can actually see towards the the edges the uh, foveated rendering. No. So yeah, look. Not fake. We've got the um, OpenXR toolkit running and virtual desktop. Uh, what? 2.4 gigabits at the minute. Okay, we're not moving or anything. Space warp disabled godlike graphics. 90 FPS. Right, let's go. So, let me turn the menu off. Foveated rendering is on. Pattern quality wide. Check the settings at the top. Processing is off. Override resolution, no. So, we're not overriding the resolution at all. That's okay, it's gone. There we go. Stay in double file. Oh, I have no. I'm using, I'm using control to excuse my driving skills, but it's just to prove this works. Look, it's con completely wireless. So you'll just have to judge the smoothness for yourself and uh, look at the latency, 36 milliseconds. Yeah boy. Yeah, on the brakes. I love the AI. So it's totally fine. I can't really. Um, it's hard to see any codec compression. In fact, I can get away with um, more resolution here because I'm locked at 90. And I did some back to back tests last night with Quest Wired Link versus um, this setup. And I couldn't really tell much difference. So whichever option you want to choose, the latency. But I'll have to uh, pause and read your comment because I've got the engine sound a bit loud. I think. Turn the volume down a little. See what you said, but I can just double tap and go through to reality, or I could just lift it up. I thought no sync virtual desktop so much better than cable. No shimmering artifacts like on Quest. Is that a question for me? I can't see any shimmering. No. Um, based on the settings that I had. Uh, which should be able to re actually I have to bring it up here what I'm talking about. In fact I can I can turn it off even more resolution here. Uh, let's go back. So that's not struggling at all. Uh, video. So resolution scale depth down seventy, so the world scales that, but and then I'm super sampling it up to one forty, so I might turn this up a bit. Yeah, definitely, without a doubt. Because I, I, I tried this, uh, not just this game, but um, like AMS2, which is very well optimized. And with the five gigahertz router that I used before, in fact, it was just a Wi-Fi 5. Um, wasn't Wi-Fi 6. I did try the Wi-Fi 6, but it didn't make a difference, but 6E 
which is the jump up to the six gigahertz has has made all the difference so yeah if you if you can get one make sure it's a wi-fi 6e router that you get and that that tp link archer 75 that i've linked in description is the one i'm using definitely recommend it uh, and yeah it's now play if if you've got it wired so if you've got your pc wired into it directly and you connect directly to it <laughs> well here's the thing so if you're going for the 512 gig like you could um, you know I considered the 512, but the difference that I've paid by getting the router and the 128 gig is the same as buying the 512, 512 gig headset. Uh, plus, I can use other devices on it, on that router as well, which is cool. Like my phone is like really quick now. Uh, and, and my uh, work laptop is like faster than using the LAN that I've got available in here. I use it on wireless because I can go over like two gig you now. Um, so let's turn it up. Pull it, put it all the way to 100. So, okay. So, you see, so here's the thing. So, you see, it says um, Oculus runtime. That That's a bug in the. Get Discord. You'll. At the minute, this is like um, a Discord private beta. I've linked the GitHub page that Matt's got for this, but there's no it does no release uh, install a file on the GitHub page. He's only put it on Discord because it's beta testing still. And one of the bugs is saying the wrong runtime. If you look at the his page, it says um, OpenXR, so it isn't open. It's we're running OpenXR because that's that's how we can see the toolkit. There you go. So, uh, so the question is, does virtual desktop running in OpenXR mode run better than SteamVR for ACC? Definitely yes, because you're now bypassing SteamVR. So if you're playing playing wirelessly, this is the way to, to play this game now. Right, so I turn the resolution up a bit. To maximum now, I might have gone a bit too far. <laughs> on 65. Paco all right. Antonio said, "Can you repeat that? Your video cut out." Has it? Have I frozen? So the bit I was repeating is: see where it says runtime in the virtual desktop in the corner, bottom left. This is actually the OpenXR runtime that's running at the minute. Hence, you can see the OpenXR toolkit. Uh, so running. The open XR virtual desktop open XR runtime is what allows you to use the open XR toolkit via virtual desktop. Uh, okay, I just need to turn that back down a little because that was a bit much. So maybe I turn this down to 120. What's always confusing with the video settings in ACC for VR, you've got resolution scale. Um, which I think is like the world, the, the game resolution, like how sharp it, it thinks it should render a tree, how many pixels. And then the I think the VR Welcome pixel Antonio. density is like Set super okay. scaling. That's what I thought. Thank you, smiley face. So we've knocked that down a bit. That looks like we're going to be locked at 90 now. Ish. That, that's sharp. Yeah, I'll drop in a little 90. Oh, we're locked now. We've got, we've got two FPS counters. Also, you'll see the game uh, latency is saying zero milliseconds, which is obviously a bug. It's obviously not taking zero seconds to render all one. GT, GT. It's the uh, FPS counter. There is a voice to our text now. I will go back to flights in a minute. I'm just happy I got this working again. Because that proves it's set up correctly. I think 
catch them up. A bit of traffic. GT GT. Set 45 MS, my god, that's awesome for wireless. I mean, I am right next to the router, so I could be throwing my balls right now. But it's like just being on wired latency wise, there's like no no stutters or anything. And I'm casting. <laughs> oh no, I'm casting. Down. So the only downside or limitation of this is a battery power. And when I was testing it on Wednesday, whilst casting, I probably got about an hour and a half, hour to an hour and a half. You'll get more with uh, without casting. And you can turn the brightness down directly on the quest to give you a bit more battery life. But yeah man, how cool is this? No wires at all. GT GT said Bobo VRM3 my man yeah I'll have to contact them maybe I can get one to review <laughs> if I can avoid spending money fatal error okay well there you go the first error didn't like me coming out right So, what do people want to see? Should I jump back into Microsoft Flight Sim now with this? Or, um... Did, did we do this with Open? Yeah, we did. We did this the other day. So the only thing we didn't do was... Auto Impulse 2. GT, maybe, GT. I, maybe I try that. Said Cure when done, send it to me, LOL. So, see Open Composite Runtime Switcher. This is on, so we could run ACC. So there is an update. I don't want to click that in case it breaks it. So what would people rather see? AMS2 or Microsoft Flight Sim? Or DCS? I guess we've not seen this tonight, but this is the first time we've been on virtual desktop, so... GT GT Sedums 2 AMS 2 GT GT Sed AMS 2 Be okay. with controller I don't think it matters which one so um this game Tony doesn't Hawks. launch correctly Sedums 2 connect our toolkit so I think it'll end up in Steam VR mode anyway, because it'll it'll switch to uh, the actual Oculus runtime. I know it says Oculus in the thing, because there's there's something in the game code that detects the headset. So I don't, we'll see. I don't know if this will even work. I've not tested it. See, I don't think we'll get the. Um, Maybe something. Maybe is it? Is this a workaround? Well, it'll be a laugh if this works. Uh, so until now, there's been no way to run this with the um, OpenXR toolkit because the game used to think, "Oh, wait a minute, you're using an Oculus headset," and then step in and take over. But now, using virtual desktop, the game. D doesn't know it's not Kill's headset. Is that right? Yeah, look. <laughs> there you go. All the people that have wanted to use um, the OpenXR toolkit with a quest. All right. I'm trying to think. Because I think it worked on the G2, but never on the, um, on the Quest 2. Oh, yeah, that's right. I don't... Okay. That's pretty cool.
Can someone tell me if my memory's correct on that? If you had a Quest 2, did you ever get the OpenXR runtime? Sorry, the OpenXR toolkit working? Because if I remember correctly, it would always force it to the Oculus SDK mode. Yeah. Uh, should we go? Not Bathurst, board of Bathurst, yeah. Brands Hatch, yeah, it's because I was there recently. Five laps? How many cars we got? 31. I don't know what graphics we've got set here. Lincoln Clay VR. Oh, look. Set try F123 next open XR toolkit doesn't work with meta headsets either. Yeah, that's um that definitely won't work. I mean, it'll work in the Steam VR mode over virtual desktop. I could try that, but um, the reason it doesn't work is that it's, it doesn't have a native OpenXR mode and it's open composite is, is the problem. Um, I think it's the splash screen or something. I think there needs to be even an update. The proper fix would be for Codemasters to uh, implement OpenXR support like iRacing's got, uh, you know, in addition. So like if you take, say, DCS, for example, it runs mixed mode. So DCS can run either Steam VR mode or OpenXR mode. iRacing will do free modes. It'll do Oculus SDK mode, Steam VR mode, and OpenXR mode. So really, games going forward, ideally should run in just OpenXR mode and then it offers the most compatibility across more headsets. You're not having to do a version for Oculus and a version for Steam VR headsets and a version for WMR headsets, for example. That's, that's the whole point of OpenXR. Uh, what I was looking at? Graphics. Performance is it? Just go. So that's the monitor resolution. Well, mostly ultra. What are those ones bottom? Leave that on four. This might have been what I had the uh, Pimax crystal testing on. Let's right. start. I'm using the Xbox controller, I'll just use the maps. Sorry, why am I looking that way? Should we, should we use the camera? Should we look in this way? <laughs> One thing you can't see at the minute is a chat. I think there'd be a way around it if you use... Um, so open XR knee board or something. Let's turn the uh, foliate rendering off. But I didn't need it. Oh no, I didn't bang the controls. It's interesting because the menu knows what's going on. As in the control is doing the menus, but it's set to my wheel. I'm out just to change it. Sorry, I forgot. Control configuration is a bit of a pain in this game, and I don't want to mess up my wheel. My wheel config. So uh, options, controls. Right now, I can change it. Oh, 
Go for number five. Yeah, okay. Again. What time is it? 20 past 11, wow. It's a long stream. So, I've been recording bits of the stream, so I might try and piece together a quick edit on the highlights of the setting up, rather than me record another tutorial from scratch again. If you're wondering, to appreciate it's quite a long, long thing to fast forward to, I'll also put chapter markers in. Bumper buttons for gear changes. Yeah, what's that button do? That's changing view. How's that looking? That's looking pretty good for me. Frame time. 3.3 milliseconds on the CPU and about 6 on the GPU. So quite a bit of spare capacity capacity to turn it up more. Um, Damn you! <laughs> Pilot! Uh, I am on the uh, Xbox controller. I'm looking the right way at least. Just to see if a dirt rally works. Actually, I've not tried that. I want to give that a quick blast in a minute. Yeah, I suppose eye racing could be the other one to test. Even 120 hertz mode. I'm getting used to it with controller. A few more laps. To recap, I had some initial setup problems before I got going. And, uh, just rebooting the Quest 3, fixed in the end.
I'll stop in a minute. Okay, so I'll see if Dirt Rally works because I've not tried that yet. Not through virtual desktop, as far as I can remember. Maybe I did, but not via OpenXR Toolkit and um, Dirt Rally, I haven't. Look, people still there, still awake? I did see a black box in front of me earlier when I tried this. So it, it might not work. Yeah, something funky with the layering. Don't know if it'll disappear if I get past it, we'll see. Me? What I saw earlier. I got to see the menu. I don't know what that is. <laughs> right, we're wireless. So let's stand up and see if we can look around. Oh no, because I've got it on... Um, No, one time trial. <laughs> this is hilarious. I'll sit down in a minute. Hopefully when I jump in the car, this black box thing disappears, whatever it is. Start. All right, let's see if that goes. Yeah, it's gone. I don't know what it is. All right. It's the proof. Open XR toolkit and dirt rally on virtual desktop. I can see foveated renderings on. Again, this must have been when I was. Setting up and testing it on the uh, crystal. Turn that off. Have plenty of power. Handbrake square. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Fifteen. Three right of a crest long tightens. Into four left. Tightens two. I would say this game I can notice um, compression artifacting in the darker scenes but it's not major you know it's oh, yeah. restart where's the restart menu Oh, there might be a slight issue. I can't see where the restart option is. Oh, there it is. Okay. 
bit, bit hit and miss on Dirt Rally, it looks like. Are you sure? Yes. So I'd say the experience on the Pimax Crystal for this game in particular is a lot is is better is razor sharp. You can spend the time configuring it. Latency, latency is still low. Oh, shit. I'm playing on controller, honest. Right sections look fine. So when you notice it's more in the um, shadow sections, you notice a bit of codec compression. What I might do, I might switch back to link cable. See what it looks like. interesting I didn't notice it so much on ACC but a lot of graphical fidelity in the wood sections here more more work for the codec It's also an interesting. Um, there's like this invisible panel. I don't know what it is. That. Oh, yes. Wait, damn you. Alright, um, I'm going to do quick back to back testing and switch back to wired link now. So, uh, where's my controls? Let's see what it looks like with the bitrate set to 900. Is it noticeably any better? Plus, my power's pretty low. Seb. Ooh, 7%. Maybe that had an impact. I am casting as well. Is the stream still working? Are people still there? Gregor755 said the casual racing gamer just did a video one hours ago with settings with no compression artifacting. Gregor755 did a one said hour. I would love to see you try it. The casual racing game we just did. Uh, what? Wh which game we're we talking about, Greg? A dirt rally or something else? Need to put this in quick for uh... Greg or seven five five. Said ACC, I racing and others. Okay. 
Gregel 755. Said it will work with dirt. Yeah, so um, I have tried it. The first stream I did um, with virtual desktop. Is only, the only difference today is I'm, I was going via the um, OpenXR toolkit. Turn it off. Let that get some power back for a minute. In fact, I'll plug it down, the power directly into it. Let it recharge back up. I think when I started, switched to virtual uh, desktop and went completely a while, so I was on 76% battery power. I don't know how long that was to go down to seven. It was like about an hour. Um, switch the uh, capture card back over from the Chromecast to the PC now. Thanks everyone that's uh, hung around and stopped by. And if you haven't already, smash that like button. It helps with the uh, search search results on the YouTube. Gregel755 said he used the link cable and 700 Mbps bitrate and he said it's got rid of compression artifacts. He only had a 3080 so you can easily run it. Yep, I'll uh, switch back to the wired link now. And I'll, I'll put it on the maximum, which I think is 900, is what the GUI lets you input. Right. He'll be back in a moment. Quick bio break. So coming up, we're going to do Dirt Rally 2 again. So we're going to do Dirt Rally 2, but with wired link now, just because I noticed um, codec artifact artifacting, which I didn't notice on AMS2 or ACC, but I think it's because the graphics are simpler, so the, it compresses the, uh, the image easier. When you've got a lot of imagery going on, Codecs tend to struggle unless you up the bitrate. So I'm going to switch back to Wired Link now, um, which has the H.264 codec, and see how that compares to Virtual Desktop. But the latency has been spot on with um, the 6E Wi-Fi router. All right, back in a minute.
and I'm back. Okay. Um, so first things first. So when switching, so we had the virtual desktop OpenXR runtime installed to get the OpenXR toolkit working via virtual desktop. However, with that OpenXR runtime switched, if you go back to just standard link connection, um, it'll be using the wrong runtime. It'll warn you there. Current OpenXR runtime is virtual desktop OpenXR. Make sure, make the Oculus OpenXR runtime active to run game, blah, blah, blah. So you don't have to do this. I think it'll still work with the virtual desktop one, but this is the normal way you'd run a setup without any virtual desktop stuff. So I'll, I'll put it back to normal by hitting that button. Right. What are we doing for power? So our QJet cable again. So I'll just unplug it. So to activate the chip on these, if you've not used one before, plug the power cable into the QJet cable, wait a few seconds, uh, plug the other end of the QJet cable into the headset, should activate the chip. And once you've done it in that order, then it should start charging the headset still. And then you can plug the USB A connector back into your PC. That's the proper way to do it. So it charges correctly as you use it. He says that. What tangler wires? Oh, so many wires. So we're now at 11% power. We were at seven, so it has charged a tiny bit. Open, it's gonna just keep going up. Cause this is the standard wall charger that comes with the Quest 3. So Quest 3 link, launch, please connect. Be a blank screen, which it is. Might require a Quest 3 reboot. I think I fixed it last time. So it seems fine as long as you stick to one method. It's rebooted itself. I wonder if the power's so low it's uh, it's not wanting to connect. Laundry. And then so you can see what I see was a uh, oh, made a shortcut for Oculus Mirror. I did. I need one copy. Okay. One.
Oh. Wanted to check was... Um, Oculus Debug Tool Settings. It's at 500. We're going to crank that up, won't we? The old notepad hack. Beat Rudolph said how much better is AV1 compared to H.265? Um, not much. Um, I'm so I'm thinking of it from a purely um, video editing perspective. Gregor 755. I've not really compared it much with virtual Set desktop. I've just used the... on quality, not normal. Disabled. Mobile. Asynchronous space warp off. PC. Asynchronous space warp. Disabled. Leave on that. So. H265 doesn't seem to work well over Link for some reason. It just goes all janky. Uh, I, th I think that setting's there for uh, Air Link. H265. Quality not disabled. Gregor 755. Set quality not disabled. And then let me disconnect link and reconnect it because I don't know which of those will get picked up. Still be at seventy two. Let me check. Set to it. All right. Let's disconnect. Pete Rudolph said, "Should I rather use a Wi-Fi six E antenna from my PC and create a hotspot, or should I use Wi-Fi five from my router for virtual desktop godlike quality?" Would you rather use a Wi-Fi six E antenna from your PC, create a hotspot? No, don't do that. Or should I use a Wi-Fi 5 from my router for virtual desktop? So, the way you're supposed to do it is you should have your PC Ethernet wired to the router and then on the same network as the Quest is connected to. So, uh, so yeah. Cofational. Said AQ3, 4090, i9, router Wi-Fi 6E. VD and Godlike and bitrate set to 200 plus AV110 bit and disabled space warp and Snapdragon upscaling turned off. Virtual desktop Opunxa, Opunx toolkit, set Oculus Opunxa runtime. So, what have you got there? It's the same turned off, it's just a sorry, but it's our toolkit. Yeah, so that's what we we just uh, were trying earlier on uh, Dirt Rally, that exact setup. Get up. Um, yeah, so we had literally all those settings just now, and we're uh, going back to Dirt Rally now with Link Cable. The debug settings. said the problem is that my router is downstairs. I have a Wi Fi repeater connected to my PC via Ethernet, though. Will that work flawlessly? Um, no. So the recommendation is get a um, get a, a, a new dedicated router. I wouldn't use a repeater, definitely not. 
Oh, I'll add a lot of latency. And my uh, microphone's starting to flash, as in the power's getting low. So I better be quick. Headset power, please plug in your headset. Oh no. Still draining slightly. All right, I'll have to quickly test this. It's draining faster than it's charging it would appear. That'll be the last test anyway of tonight. We've been going for several hours. <laughs> I've talked myself hoarse. <laughs> All right, see if this works. See if we get that black square thing. I don't think we normally do. So, back to back comparison, I'll do the exact same time trial. This plugged in? No. <laughs> God damn it, my Xbox control is not even plugged in after all. Thanks for the uh, the sub, whoever that was. Go. I've got a feeling if because the bitrate's higher, it's going to handle the high velocity of changing colours. I think for the other two examples, for VCC and AMS2 over um, virtual desktop with the AV1 codec at 200, I think it's still, I mean, it's, it's fine for those with simple color schemes, but when you go through the woods, we got lots of changing lighting and colors. It makes it, I mean, it's not bad, but let's see, this is any better. Wait before the headset dies. Yeah, I've got this black square that I've noticed. Okay. Kofesh no. Said do you have automatically adjust bitrate turned off in VD streamer? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'll do this. Okay. So this looks better in the darks now. Beat Rudolph. Said how much latency will a repeater add? Uh, I, I don't know. You'll be you be able to um, compare to what I was running. <laughs> Into or your best bet would be uh, join the virtual desktop Discord. Maybe someone who's got a Similar setup to what you've got. Stephen Duncan said, "How do you set 900 encode?" Uh, how do you set 900? Um, just copy paste it in. It's it's GUI locked to 500, but you can copy paste the volume. Yes, yeah, so this 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 looks better. Without question. Which is funny because like the ACC and uh, MS2 they look fine. It must be because there's more colours, you know, finer detail being shown, I don't know. But latency wise it's perfectly fine. Virtual desktop. Let me check that setting um, for dynamic. What's it? It'd be annoying if that was on not as the cause, but I don't think it was.
take it that's a setting that's on the um, the Oculus app, right? Make the link a minute. Go fashion though. Set in open XA toolkit, do you have cast sharpness on high? Uh, I can't remember. I'll have to check that. It is the same for both, though. I've not changed up Oculus Toolkit settings across both. I think I've got it on 70%. I'll have to check. Uh... Stephen Duncan said just stole your debug settings. What is the reasoning for FOV tangent and video codec choice? FOV tan tangent. So then they should be default. I've not changed them. So I think are they default on one? So you'd only adjust that if you want to like shrink the FOV that's rendered to the headset to give you a performance boost. Uh, that was one of them. What's it? Video bit rate. I've got it set to 200. I can't. Where's that dynamic mode? Remember who said that now? So let me read through chat. Someone's saying, Have I got automatic bit rate set? Cafasiano, do you have automatic adjust bitrate turned off? I can't see that or that setting. Cofacino said in OpenXA Toolkit, did you change the resolution for 150 percent dash 3760 x 3936? the resolution for 150 percent no I didn't I didn't increase it uh, so the difference wasn't a resolution thing it was more the codec I could see more compression do it rally 2 where it didn't seem to make much difference between the AMS 2 and ACC uh, but first things first let me look at my Oculus book settings again So one one that's the standard on the tangent multiplier. Was the other one you someone asked? Beat Rudolph said which cheap dedicated router would you recommend for quest for video streaming? codec choice was your question. So H two six four because H two six five doesn't seem to work over um wired link. It goes all funky. I think it only works with Airlink H265. Well, if someone's got it working with wired link on H265, let me know. <laughs> Tell me how you did it. Because whenever I do it, it just goes all warpy, like I can't handle it. Uh, I'll, I'll double check the um, OpenXR toolkit settings in a minute. But what I'll do is, because you, you said do you have automatically adjust bitrate turned off in VD streamer? I can't actually find that automatic bitrate option. Let me cast it so you can see the settings. Let's bring up my settings again and then I'll double check um, 
the OpenXR Toolkit settings and do it really. Like a boss. Said it's in the desktop streamer. It's in the desktop streamer. Oh, damn it. Right. Stephen Duncan. Said thanks. I have been sim racing on AG2, so not done much linked cable for a year or more. Automatically just bitrate is ticked. Right. So let's let's retest. I didn't see that setting. That's confusing. So you have one setting for the bitrate on the Oculus client and an automatic one. Wonder what decides what bitrate it should pick then. Um Okay. Right. We swap the cable over real quick so you can so people can see where this setting is because it's not that obvious. I need, I need to get a HDMI switcher, or, or maybe I'll put in uh, my other capture card, <laughs> so I can have to keep sw swapping from PC capture to uh, Chromecast. Right, this is the setting, and so it can result in a laggy experience. Black screen, additional latency. You should only unlock option when using a cloud computer and the available bandwidth isn't accurately measured. Oh, okay. We'll turn it off, see if that makes a difference. Right. Take that blue tack off. Cofacino said I read somewhere that when you are wired it uses the H.264 codec to max equals 900 and for the air link it uses H.265 to max equals 200 okay yeah may maybe H.265 hmm. so H.265 like AV1 should use like half the bandwidth for the same image quality as H.264 so I wonder why they've... It's probably a decode rate limit on the XR2 chip. And that's why it can't go higher than that. But you'd think a higher bit rate, that there's like less, less decoding to do. It's going to be less compressed. But I guess it's faster data transfer, isn't it? Do I need to um, charge this mic because it's going to start cutting out in a minute? Let's take a quick five minute break again and then we'll retest this finally, uh, recasting the virtual desktop with uh, back at 200 megabits and see if. Uh, we see the, the artifacting. We'll also check the OpenXR toolkit settings. Cofacino said or they didn't update yet the Oculus software because VD now has a V1 codec which is better and more demanding.
bean. <clears throat> right, back for another f final test. I keep saying final test, and then there's one more question and one more scenario. Someone asked me. Don't forget, if you're new to the stream, enjoying it, hit the thumbs up. Helps the channel. Well, I'll leave the cable in because we need the power. Virtual Desktop OpenXR. Just to switch it back in. I think I can probably just do it with the um, OpenXR Explorer. See if that has switched it. viewing from. I'm just waiting for the headset to charge because it's on <laughs> quite low power. I do with um and you'll need to charge this mic before it dies. It's okay at the minute. Stephen Duncan said just launched into PC VR for first time on Quest 3 and was godmacked. Definitely selling the G2 now. Looks stunning. Okay, well that's good. Some other people are getting the same opinion. So he's launched PC VR for the first time on Quest 3 and he's got smack. Definitely selling the G2 now. Looks stunning. So what did you like most? Is it the, um, the bigger FOV on it? Or is it the uh, bigger, bigger sweet spot or both? Or less glare of the pancake lenses? Being from cold and windy Aberdeen. Nice. Yeah. I'm down near London. Stephen Duncan. It's also gone cold and horrible. Said viewing from cold and windy Aberdeen. But uh, hopefully the weather improves tomorrow. So tomorrow, I hope to go to uh, EGX. Maybe catch up with a few other VR YouTubers. So if I can, I'm going to try and live stream from the event. So there's a VR showcase on at 6.30. Um, so I'll try and get some sneaky footage of that. I don't know if they're streaming that themselves you know, on the official EGX site or not. But if they're not, I'll try and Stephen Duncan get some footage of that. Said I think FOV mixed with sweet spot forward slash lenses. The FOV. Co the sweet spot. Said do you know the application virtual desktop Opunxa? Are you asking me? Yeah, we've been running it tonight. So, uh, for those that don't know what it is, it's up until now you couldn't use the OpenXR toolkit until you had that virtual desktop OpenXR installed. So it's it's in beta form currently. Uh, there's a link to the um, Matt's GitHub site in the description below on what it is and how to install it but uh, the installer isn't actually on the GitHub page yet because it's still in beta. So if you want to get hold of it, you have to join the Discord and uh, go to the pinned section in the uh, Oculus channel. All right, <clears throat> do we have enough power?
accuracy underscore gaming. 10%. Not said really does good. Oculus Mirror works with virtual desktop. Kofational. Said thanks. I'm waiting for that winking smiley. Does Oculus Mirror work with virtual desktop? Um. I'm not sure. <laughs> so when I've been testing it with Link Cable earlier, I was using Mirror then. But when I've been using uh, Virtual Desktop, I've been um, casting the image from the Quest directly so you can see the performance info. Uh, I'm going to say probably not, but I've never tried it. I could try it in a minute, actually. Once you fire it up, I'll see what if, if Oculus Mirror shows anything. Since it's not going over Oculus Link, it's using Virtual Desktop, I'm going to think, no, it won't. <laughs> Accuracy underscore gaming. That's plugged in. Said I do T think it does. Quest like switching between these runtimes. Accuracy underscore like gaming. Said don't mean lol. Works first time. Then, all right, we're on Oculus Mirror, see if it works. Has it opened anything? No, it's nothing. It's not using uh, any of the Oculus runtime. So, yeah. Negative. Right. What the hell's going on? What have I pressed? Alright, okay. There it is. So, oh, I need to swap the uh, capture card over to the the Chromecast, so you can see what I'm seeing on the Oculus Accuracy directory. underscore gaming. Said OP. In hindsight, I should have put the other capture card in the stream PC. It's only a 1080p one though. I've only got one 4K capture card. Ugh. So this game always goes slow when you click off the focused window. And then to cast, you need your phone to say cast to this device. I, mean, I liked it better when there was just the option to do it in the headset. Maybe you can, I've just not found this where it is yet. Accuracy underscore alive. Gaming. Said I definitely need to install the OpenXR. Right. This is the funny thing. I've never noticed this before. I guess this is, can you see you see this black panel I'm getting? I don't ever remember seeing this before the in OpenXR mode. Said how is the screen door effect on this headset? Seen conflicting info where some say there isn't any and others say there certainly is. Uh, it's barely perceptible for me. I can see it if I'm looking for it. Uh, 
Um, put it this way, compared to the G2, I still think this looks a lot better. How can I see the bloody thing now? See this box? I don't know why it does this. I don't know if it's the OpenXR toolkit gone funny or open composite. First time trial. I'm 67. Said there is an option in virtual desktop for mirroring. Is there? Well, that's good to know. And I wouldn't need to do this casting. Will it mirror exactly what I'm seeing right here? Options. The Prodigy Exp. Said I'm coming from an original Vive, so anything will be better, but I was really curious how much better it is. Thank you. No worries. From origi original Vive, yeah, this will be a massive step up. Uh, it's not saying to cast. Is that in the streamer app? Accuracy underscore gaming. Said do you cast straight to your phone then to S monitor or just Google? Um so I, I initiate the cast from my phone. So previously on, on the uh, quest you could just go to settings and go cast two in the headset and you could pick where it's casting to. I can't see the option now. You have to control the casting via your phone, but so it's still going directly from my um, my quest to the Chrome. Runtime should T it be equals virtual desktop open sir. Stephen Duncan said even Obviv to Quest Two was huge. A Quest Three must be blowing your mind. Do the. Uh, same stages. Right, let's kill the annoying music. Accuracy underscore gaming. Said the cast in quest is in the camera mode. All right, so I can initiate cam. Yeah. So it used to be under people or socials you could share. Hello, Greg. It doesn't matter, we've got it casting now anyway. Accuracy underscore gaming. Oh, Set there. the pink color app. Okay. Ah. Well, that's good to know. Thank you. You saved me an extra trip to my phone. <laughs> I, I didn't know where I'd gone. All right, cool. Thanks for that. Right. Um, there wasn't anything else to double check, was there, before we go and get asked what setting did you have it on? I think we'd... Um, Double tap the setting there. Streaming. So this is what we're running at. We've turned off the auto adjust on the uh, desktop streamer app. We're at 200 here. What I thought someone was saying is that there was a way to, for the desktop streamer app to show a version version of what it's streaming but uh, I guess it doesn't need to because you've got the copy on the screen but you can't actually see the the performance stats the performance overlays what I want to show to you guys it's the only reason I'm casting
That VR pass through feature is pretty cool. Which into VR chat, you can green screen out the environment and just have the person, and then the virtual desktop will remove it for pass through. I like that. I'll have to try that at some point. Okay, let's go. Let's see if that's um, fixed the the codec compression, the shadows that I could. Shit. Same position. Things a little better. Mm, not much in it to, to how it was before. So, for Dirt Rally, because of the the number of different textures and different shading and different colours and stuff, I think link wide link high bit rate does look better. It's noticeable. However, ACC and AMS2 on tracks where you've got simpler textures and a lot of the same colour, the AV1 codec handles it much better and isn't really much of a perceptible difference. Interesting, eh? I would, you would assume all games would be the same. So there you go, you've got options. I am. This is virtual desktop wireless, so I've only got the power cable in for battery power, but latency wise, it's fine. Has it jumped up a bit since we made that change on um, the streamer? Because I think we were on 36 milliseconds on average before. See, this section, the light, sunny bits are fine, it's the shadows, shadow sections. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's um, more of a shadow problem. So if you want to do a, a test yourself, try dark again. Said, do you notice anything different by having Snapdragon upscaling turned on or off? Um, that's a good point. Let's, let's try turn that Snapdragon setting. Thanks for the ideas. I get carried away. Also, stationary, where there's no movement, is pin sharp. So if you are playing a game where you're not moving much, you know, like a, a flight sim, where there isn't much velocity of the image, really sharp, because the codec can handle that. But when you've got really fast movement, I imagine a, a bad scenario would be a space sim, like Elite Dangerous, where you've got lots of dark scenes with lots of lights flashing around. You know, like going at warp speed, that would be difficult. Uh, but stationary like this, razor sharp. Uh, Snapdragon, Dubry. That. I assume you can do it in real time. I need something to look at, it looks the same to me. Oh, someone was asking about the um, OpenXR Toolkit settings, weren't they? So this is what I've got it on. I had it the same for both. Sharpness, 30% contrast adaptive sharpening we've got on. Foveate renderings off. Override resolution, no. Um, it, it's, it's totally sharp anyway. I don't need any more resolution. It's only when I'm moving at speed. I could see a uh, codec compression in the shadows. Well, stationary, it's, it's brilliant. <laughs> well, that's not unfortunately how you drive. Right, let's have a. Turn back on. Also, the dash, is the dash any sharper? You, see, you can see the textures on the dash. Cofacial no. Said try turbo off. Cofacial no. Said turbo. Okay. 
that one, turn one off. Right, turbo off. You mean the Oculus setting, turbo mode, or is the one called, is there a turbo setting in here? I could turn buffering off. I'm not having stutters, so I don't see that would make a difference. Increase video nominal range makes. I'm 67. Said, can you please recommend a Quest 3 VR startup procedure with MSFS? I'm confused. With HP Reverb G2, I just click Start VR in MSFS and headset and software in Kexar tool forward slash composite uh -huh. boot up automatic. Alright. Cofacino. Said open Xer toolkit and Trubo off. Cofacino. Said Turbo. Yeah, oh, I think I've broken it coming in and out. He's died. You'll see blank too. Um, yeah, I mean, I can turn turbo mode off. Oh, shit. It finally came out. The other thing is, this is the beta version of a, a computer found. I wonder if the Wi Fi's dropped because the battery's low. Mind you, you're still seeing the cast, aren't you? Well, 6%. I think that's the problem. Battery's dying. I think I'll finish up there because I, I need to get up for EGX tomorrow. But uh, yeah, turbo mode, I can't see that affecting the um, codec compression on virtual desktop. If anything, that will just make it potentially less smooth or more smooth because that just plays around with the frame timing. Uh, casting, stop casting there. There you go. <laughs> the other thing, cameras and password reveals everyone's room. I have to make sure I've got no bank statements out. Let me catch up with chat because there might be some messages I missed before I sign off for the evening. Okay, can you please recommend a Quest 3 VR startup procedure with Microsoft Flight Sim? You're confused with HP Reverb G2, you just click Start VR mode in Microsoft Flight Sim and headset software. XR Tool Composite Booter would be it. So, right. Um, yeah, thanks for the follow, uh, Copa. So, f so I actually did it in the stream today. Um, it's, it's dead simple. So, if you've got it set up correctly, so you don't need Open Composite for um, Microsoft Flight Sim because it's a native Open XR game. So, um, you just need the Open XR toolkit installed. Uh, which, which headset are you referring to? Quest Free. So. You don't need to install any runtime either because the, the meta software comes with the Quest OpenXR runtime built in. So just the easiest way to get up and running would be to get a link cable. I recommend the QJack one. Actually, it reminds me I'll put a uh, link afterwards, an affiliate link in the description later. To, if not, just look for your area, the QJack cable, because it, it allows you to put the um, supplied charger into the USB power via a, a chip. And so it's cheap as well, it's like £25 versus like 80 or whatever it is for the official one. Um, yeah, so that, download the OpenXR toolkit. In fact, you must already have the OpenXR toolkit if you're running it with the G2, right? So yeah, I'm not, not sure why it doesn't work when you just press um, VR mode. You have to go into, it is a bit strange on Microsoft Flight Team, you have to go into like general options, VR mode, click it. Yeah, because I, I did that earlier. Right, I think I taught myself dry. <laughs> if you enjoyed the uh, the very long stream, I'll um, I'll put chapter markers for certain sections and then bits of recorded at the start on setup guides. 
I might just do a small edit and reuse it rather than record one from scratch. Uh, like I say, I'll be at EGX tomorrow. I'll try and live stream some of it. So you might see some other VR YouTubers with me. I'm 67. And try and cover the um, Said thank you. The VR showcase, which is 6.30 PST uh, tomorrow. So that's it. I've also got um, WRC part two to live stream. So a part of the embargo, I've got until Monday to stream up to another hour. I've already done one hour because they've limited it to two hours. So it's 2D only at the minute. VR um, implementation or VR support Said thank you, Han VR. is coming uh, tw 2024. <laughs> so it says post launch on the Steam page, but the earliest from what I can see is 2024. But anyway, I really like Dirt Rally 2 and I want to get like um, skilled up on it, even if it's just 2D. Uh, ready for when the VR comes out and, and the cool thing with it is it's got clubs just like Dirt Rally 2 has so if, if people are playing on PlayStation or Xbox they can join in as well so if you're into rally games and you want to take part in the WRC clubs once it launches at the end of the month uh, join the Discord we'll get a few of us we'll do some racing again it's only 2D actually the other thing I haven't tried you could make a massive ultra wide screen on the Quest <laughs> And view view the game that way. In mixed reality mode, you'd be able to look around your room like as if it's um, an ultra wide monitor. Might be something cool to try out. All right, that's it. Thanks for everyone that uh, tuned in, asked questions. Um, yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Cheers. Bye.